Fucking Sunday. 
I'm glad you're here. Good evening, my dears. Hello, Michał. Great to have you with you, with us. Michał Brzeziak, our cinematic designer. Great that you're with us, Michał. As always, you know, it's such a pleasure, guys, to see you all here. I already also saw Muzzy, our art QA lead. Uh, great Muzzy that you're with us. And Chivok, our customer support engineer. Uh, hello, hello, all the reds. <laughs> I'm fucking good to lol. I'm glad you're good to lol, G Apollo. Miha wrote, decided to drop by and see how you all been doing. I, I'm seeing Pavel has mastered that streaming game. I, I've, I've uh, learned uh, one or two tricks, but you know, like, far from mastering, but we will see Miha how it goes. Uh, Kikas wrote, I hope we'll get um, DLSS 3 update soon. All YouTubers testing it drive me crazy. I mean, you know, like, um, uh, when it's uh, released, it's gonna be released, you know? Uh, that's um, as much as I can I can tell you. Is, is that a grenade? Correct. That is my grenade mug. Um, that's actually one of the mugs that I got from one of you. My chums um, sent to our studio. <laughs> so... Uh, yes, that is my, uh, uh, well, um, that is my grenade mug, you know, to celebrate this uh, fantastic playstyle. Um, Tyler, great to have you with us, my friend. Tyler is asking, is it DLS3 exclusive for the 40 series cards? Uh, I believe it is, Tyler. Nevertheless, you can still, uh, I guess, test them if you have the card, so... And I, uh, I think like Digital Foundry was testing it, so uh, you could see it basically running and so on. Nice Eredin T-shirt. Is that a hint? Uh, <laughs> Yefi TL. No, Yefi. This is not a hint. Uh, it was just a T-shirt I didn't have for uh, on me for some time. But you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, look at that. I got my hands on The Witcher Three. Uh, this is one of the very, very. This is one of the very, very old shirts actually I have from. Uh, Witcher 3 like hands-on event that happened I think it was like beginning of 2015 Because um, the game was shipped in like May 2015, right? So we were doing the hands-on. I think it was like um, February or something like that and we had a bunch of uh, Journalists and all that, you know uh, playing the game. So uh, it was great Um it was great, actually, you know, that we got the, the customly made shirts, uh, sort of, uh, for such an event. Uh, there's a question, no, Camille, Camille is with us, Camille also, Camille wrote that he has some uh, issues with audio on his notebook. Uh, so I think he's just hacking the shit out of it, um, you know, uh, and he's gonna be back, I guess. My friends, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, uh, Jesus, there's like so many of you that I probably won't be able to read all of your names, uh, but I'm so glad to see all the regulars. Illusiard and Grindera exit to the next level. Arasaka apart. So good that you guys, and Crucifix, of course, bashes with us. That's so good. Uh, I'm so glad you guys are here. So, last week there was actually a bunch of different uh, news, let's say, uh, to happen, uh, you know, regarding our stuff, uh, let's call it. Uh, first thing is, of course, uh, the Growl FM, uh, you know, that's been, that's been a very, very fucking cool idea uh, that we've been cooking behind the scenes for some time uh, for you. Um, on the side of the, on the side of the My Teams, uh, Maria Mazur is, uh, is taking care of all that uh, awesome shit, uh, you know, and implementation. Uh, on that side, and we've been closely cooperating with everyone, um, you know, on the side of the comms and PR to make it happen. And uh, I really like the the first announcement uh, and so on. So I'm really, I'm really uh, hoping that you guys will send some uh, banger tracks. You know, I think it's a cool, really cool way to to just be in the game. You know, uh, I've seen like so, I've seen like so many people actually like tweeting or asking, hey, what I can do to be in the game. How, what I can do to actually have my music featured in the game. Um, and well, I mean, I think this is, uh, this is the best way, uh, honestly. Just, you know, if you go there and, um, you know, you're like, 
among the the the, the songs, uh, the chosen songs. Uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking cool. Uh, I think um, you know. Uh, did you write the Baron Questline Witcher 3? Virtuos asks. Uh, Virtuos, I wrote the quest design, uh, so that's correct. I also implemented the quest. However, the dialogues have been written by uh, Carolina Stahira, a senior writer from uh, CDPR. While the whole idea was based on a uh, story outline that was provided by Martin Blaha. Uh, so basically this is how it went um so all like you know all like detailed work you know like the dialogues and so on that's carolina stajera you know the the quest design sort of the events and everything else and implementation that's me um when it comes to cinematic design i believe majority was uh kaitek kapustinski um uh, kaitek is right now a lead cinematic designer on the new uh Polaris project uh, that you learned recently about, uh, my dears. Um, so we had a very fucking cool, good crew on this on this quest. So yes, that's the answer, uh, my friend. Grohl FM is such a cool initiative. I love uh, that we are doing it. Uh, Michał Brzeźniak wrote. Yeah, Michał, I, I completely agree. I'm really looking forward, um, you know, to hear actually what people have been making. Tyler, question. I had my brother's band write songs about 2077 for my custom radio station mod yeah i remember i think tyler isn't your isn't your station called poop fm i believe it is i believe it is uh tyler um a very in 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 uh, interesting uh choice of of the name um i have to say but um Yes, um, I, I command you. Definitely, uh, how to say it, very recognizable brand, you know, uh, but it will be pretty easy to market it, you know. I could imagine there's not this many uh, radio stations that you have to compete with, uh, you know, for the name. Very good choice, you know, very good choice. And I submitted the best of those tracks. It's a beautiful song about V uh, begging for Jackie to come home. Oh, interesting. Okay. Sounds, sounds awesome. So you said that you submitted the best songs of those tracks that's very fucking cool i'm actually curious right now uh you know uh tyler you know in the worst case you can always have it you can always have it in the poop fm uh mod and uh you know um always eager to you know to listen to what you're producing by the way because i think the mod is not out yet right like i didn't see you you tweet about it or um but I was, uh, yeah, I wasn't maybe this much online uh, this weekend, which I will mention in a moment as well. Uh, Kirkov Kalashnikov can wait to listen to Sasha Gray's voice. From the trailer, it looks like she's doing a really good job with the voice acting and somehow given her past and actual career, she seems fitting. Well, I mean, so uh, Sasha, I don't know, for, for those who don't know, she is a voice actress since long time. Uh, you know, she did like, for instance, work for um, the Saints Row, um, I think more than one game actually, uh, but I don't want to confuse you guys. You can actually check her um, EMDB credits, I think. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so this is definitely not her first gig, uh, you know, as a voice actress. Outsider no more, Camille. Uh, I mean, of course, of course, it has to play, you know, uh, from uh, from time to time. <laughs> um, I Hanks. Hello, I, Hanks. Uh, nice to have you with us. Ask hello, does people like the senior writer you mentioned have coding notions or something similar? Thanks for answer. No, my friend, really, like, writers are to write, uh, you know? And of course, you know, our writers are using our own custom tools, you know? And, and this requires some technical capabilities. But you know what? Like, if you are able to use Microsoft Word and, and Notepad, um... I don't know, a Google Calendar, you know, like this kind of level of difficulty, I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine, you know. Sometimes there's like single things, you know, for, for the writer to know about more technically, but it's not really a requirement, right? Like um, the technical part of, a, of, of the work is more of a work of a quest designer, cinematic designer, open world designer. Those are the chums that they're putting that thing you know so that that actually works uh, in the game writer is more about you know focusing on the story providing fantastic dialogues you know making sure that you guys have really well crafted written characters uh this is the most important uh thing for uh the writer um jesus christ i am uh, behind uh, the questions on the chat uh, that's probably surprise we've surprised no one um 
uh, Geralt of Rukia. Hello, Geralt of Rukia. Nice to have you with us. So, um, uh, Geralt of Rukia wrote, hello, Mr. Sasko. Um, I got this today and I wanted to share. And then there's a heart and three stars. Uh, very interesting. I'm actually um, interested what is uh, hidden under the stars, <laughs> what you got today. But I'm glad that you're with us. Um, it's your voice actor. Well, she's a voice actress. So, yes, uh, uh, that's not really, you know, uh, she's a voice actress. Um, real, real walking, real wa wa waking. Interesting nickname. Hello, new to the chat, but I have loved Cyberpunk since the release, and I'm finally glad people have been showing it the love it deserves. Uh, keep up the amazing work, and I'm excited for the expansion and sequel. Much love. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. So, first of all, uh, Kamil just wrote in the chat like a moment ago that we have still like over 50,000 players on Steam alone. Very cool. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really glad to, uh, to see it, you know. Uh, it's really, really encouraging. I also saw, like, the numbers on Twitch, you know, for, like, different streamers actually, sh you know, playing Cyberpunk and trying it out. Went really high. Uh, so that was so cool. Um, I, I I really love that. And thank you for cheering for us. You know, we're, like, the whole team's doing their best, you know, to deliver you some banging expansion. Um, and, you know, the Orion um, afterwards. Now... My dears, I have mentioned already our dear Reds uh, that are here with us, but I didn't mention our dear moderators, and I think it's time to do that. Uh, so aside of the uh, people that I already spoken about, we have, we have of course, Sapphire, uh, my dear uh, girlfriend, who's with us every week, uh, modding and being very patient uh, with me and with the chat. Recently, she was having like much, was, much I would say, more work being like reading, because you guys are very nice uh, on the chat, which I really appreciate. Uh, but I'm really glad uh, Sapphire is with us. And of course, you know, our friend Kogito. Uh, as always, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kogito, for being here. Now, um, uh, let me check the questions uh, because there's a bazillion of them. Um, what do you think about the situation with Helena Taylor? Um, why are the voice actors so poorly paid? Uh, not hopefully not in CDPR. Uh, Revolver asks. Great question, Revolver. The problem is that I don't really know about the situation well enough to really give you like educated answer regarding like Helena's situation. You know, like I obviously saw the videos uh, she posted. Uh, she posted. Uh, it looked quite. Um, uh, how do you say it? It looked quite strange, I have to admit. Like, the fact that for a whole game she was offered a flat fee. Like, um, I am not really aware, you know, how exactly the contracts with actors are written, right? So, uh, the problem is for me that, uh, you know, I, I do not, I am not able to compare it to any other cases I know. However, like, uh, for, for from what I know, like majority of the actors, the way it works is that you have the, um, you know, you are paid basically for the lines, right? You are not really paid a flat fee for a whole game. Like, I can understand that the flat fee would be paid in scenarios when, let's say, you know, just for the sake of an argument, you play like, you pay like $10, right, for one line just for the sake of arguments. And then you have 200 lines in the game, right? So then you end up with what? 2,000, um, sorry, $200. Uh, so that's very little, you know? And then as a, um, and then, uh, you know, so then as I understand, like a flat fee might be like, okay, it's anyway a bit more, you know? But I can't imagine her having so little lines in the game. Uh, so, but again, that is Revolver, really my educated guess, uh, rather than uh, a knowledge, you know, about the situation. Definitely looks quite strange, like, I would imagine that, you know, she has a um, agent, or um, normally you have also, like, those different recording studios that uh, are taking care of the contracts with actors, especially the actors that are, like, the most important people in your project, so, like, basically the actors that are acting the, um, you know, the main characters. Um, so that is a, a very surprising, um, I would say, situation, but uh, sadly I don't really know much more uh, to share here uh, with you. Like, I think, I mean, I expect that we are going to find out a bit more um, about the situation as as the uh, as it follows, uh, you know, as the situation, sorry, 
uh, develops. Uh, so I'll restrain myself from the comment because I am worried that, you know, I may like um, misguide it or mis misjudge you guys, misjudge the situation and misguide you guys like regarding uh, how it is, you know. Like normally you pay for the number of lines and you have agents and you have the studios and they take care of that. Um, so it's it's quite surprising to be honest uh, with you uh, but to hear. Um, but I know way too little, you know, to know. It also might be slightly specific, you know, for the market. So like because Platinum Games is a Japanese uh, developer um, and Helen is an English voice actress. Maybe this had something to do with that, uh, but honestly, I just, I just can't, um, can't give you more, uh, you know, here uh, regarding the situation. Um, oh dear lord, uh, I'm I'm so behind. Uh, Babsonovska, hello, uh, Babs Babsonovska, nice that you are with us. Babsonovska, hello, hello, Mr. Saskin, hello, all my loved chums and gongs. Hope you are go uh, guys doing well, uh, guys and girls. Uh, yes, I think. I hope so too. Um, Tarsalhat 929. Thank you so much, my friend, for gifting the subs to the channel. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Um, thank you for this support. Uh, it's really, really uh, lovely. God, I'm really trying to catch up with questions. Hi, Pavel. Thanks for all the work. 2077 is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Steelix666 uh, six, six, six. wrote. Uh, Steelix, I mean, uh, thank, f uh, first of all, thank you so much, my friend, uh, for playing the game and for really your kind comment. Um, I hope you're going to try Phantom Liberty and that you're going to tell us, you know, what you think about the game afterwards, you know? Because uh, I'm really curious, uh, you know, what would you feel? You know, what you uh, would you think about it? Oh God! And Tarsal, you gifted another uh, five subs uh, to the channel. Sorry, I'm just getting lost. Uh, thank you so much, my friend, uh, for all of that love. Um, Na uh, Michał Michał Zbrzeźniak wrote, feel free to ask cinematic and cyberpunk oriented questions on the chat. I'll gladly answer with what I can. I will stay today with you for a bit. Amazing. Uh, thank you, Michał. So uh, my dears, if you can hear, uh, Michał is offering, you know, to help you out. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what cinematic department is doing, those are the chums that are behind, um, you know, the uh, direction in the scene. So when you have the sort of a quest outline story written by the quest designer and then it's being like drafted, then our uh, cinematic designers are basically looking into scenes, making sure that the dramaturgy in the scenes is is intriguing, is, is done properly, uh, that it's clear uh, basically where all the points of tensions are. And uh, then our cinematic designers are directing that. So they are making sure that all that set setup is prepared correctly. They're preparing very ex uh, extensive uh, breakdown for all the animations that need to be recorded with our um, mocap team. And then our cinematic animators are preparing those animations and then cinematic design uh, implements them and polishes it up and makes sure that basically what you see in the game looks good, you know, plays well. Um, and, and here, you know, between the implementation point is always, you know, um, there is a lot of overlap with quest design and open world design uh, as well. But you can simplify and you can see, you can say that cinematic designers are responsible for directing the scenes and the characters in the game. That's basically what it is. By the way, Michał Zbrzeźniak is actually uh, one of the designers that's with us since long time. Uh, Michał was in uh, QA uh, during uh, Witcher 3, became a QA specialist in cinematics and then moved to uh, cinematic design, I believe at the very beginning or, or, uh, of uh, Cyberpunk. With Michał we did together the pickup uh, quest, we did together the um, Like a Supreme, uh, for instance, you know, this banging fucking concert that you have of the samurai on the stage. Uh, that's Mihao's work, you know, Mihao and David Cordero and Ola Motika, you know, our writer, uh, and uh, Mihail uh, Muskan, I believe, uh, our uh, lightning artist. So yes, that was the, uh, 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 you know, four raiders of apocalypse, uh, you, can, <laughs> you can say. So, so yes, uh, if Mihao is offering, you can use the opportunity to, uh, to poke him regarding that. Um, 
I really, um, I really, you know, uh, I really love working on scenes, by the way, myself, you know, it's like one of the most fun things. Like, I remember when I was talking to the team uh, and I was asked what I would be doing if I'm not the quest designer, I, I think I would be definitely a cinematic designer or I would want to be, you know, because uh, it's not that <laughs> it's not that I'm saying that I can be, but I would really love to. Um, nails. Nails ask, are you guys still in touch with Keanu Reeves? Uh, of course, my friend. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. Did you see the uh, trailer that we have shown of uh, Phantom Liberty? You can hear, uh, you know, Keanu speaking there uh, because he's coming back uh, to play Johnny Silverhand role. Uh, so you can, I, I guess you can imagine that if he's playing that role, we, we need to be in touch, right? Like, I think that's, that's quite, uh, that's quite obvious that it has to be like this. Uh, Gnomek asks, can you say the price range of Phantom Liberty? Oh, my friend, that is that is the information that can be shared only by, like, uh, the, the, you know, marketing team and so on. So, uh, you know, that's like, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. Like, I, I, I will restrain myself from commenting on, on, on that factor, you know. Um, this is definitely not, not, not my call, you know, and, and nothing connected to my uh, sort of uh, range of responsibilities, I would say. Um, okay then, uh, Kogito, thank you so much for gifting the sub to Asha Swelke. Uh, Asha, use those uh, uh, emotes well, uh, those icons. Um, Kiros wrote, uh, I'm waiting for my monitor to be delivered uh, and then I'll finally be able to play Cyberpunk with RDX. Can't wait to see Night City in full glory. Oh, uh, honestly, like... The RDX on, on, a, on, a, on a proper monitor, this looks uh, fucking amazing. What I can ask you, Kiros, to do is like, when you actually uh, be um, playing the game, just spend a bit of time to calibrate your monitor, you know, so that you have the HDR and all the colors properly, you know, and everything, so that, you know, you can really see the game uh, in, in, full, in full colors. Oh yeah, I see already first questions to me how that is very fucking cool. Uh, exit to the next level, Camionetra Tatia Alicia, of course, you know, exit to the next level, you could be like, a, um, you know, you could be a vocalist at this point. Um, uh, Real, uh, Real Walken uh, asks another question, is Johnny Silver and Roll as big in the, li uh, in the Phantom Liberty expansion as in the main story I did see what I thought was a female engram okay i don't understand the last question um i have to admit uh, the last uh, sentence in your question um about the female engram to be honest and regarding the size of the role i mean my friend my friend let's imagine i tell you what is the size that would instantly tell you you know if the story what the story is about partially right um so I can't tell you that because this is like the for the story games like ours. This is like one of the biggest fucking spoilers that you can imagine, right? I, I you know, of course I can tell you that. Um, I, you know what? I think like um, when you will play, you will see it. You know, um, I think it's cool. <laughs> That's as much as I can tell you. Okay. Anyway, Chums, I wanted to mention something before we before we um, move move forward and jump in because there's a ton of questions already. Um, so this weekend, actually, we had another um, meeting of the Girls in the Game program. This is our mentoring program for um, girls from disadvantaged backgrounds, from smaller uh, cities, from villages who really want to basically start uh, learning about gaming industry and so on. Mm. We were there, you know, the mentors, uh, the mentees, uh, so all our 20, um, all our 20 um, members uh, of, the, uh, of the program. You know, we had really cool uh, workshops together. We've been like talking about stuff and so on, just making sure uh, they, they learn. And you know, like in the span of uh, one year almost, like I've seen such a gigantic development uh, of these young people. It's, it's such a, like, I think like for me, it's such a joy to just see that you can uh, bring something to someone's life, you know, like you can be uh, a, a positive, uh, like have a positive impact, I mean, hopefully positive. <laughs> you, you can have a positive impact, you know, on someone's life and, um, and you know, you just see the, the, you know, the lights, you know, light up in their eyes when you speak about stuff. Um, and, 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 you know, when they ask questions and they're all fascinated about it, they really want to try it. They're like building their own stuff already. Um, 
like so, some of them can do shit already that I couldn't that I can't now you know I'm talking about game development right now uh, you know because there are people who are like uh, specialized in concept art in uh, you know in programming uh, specifically in cinematic animation so like or you know or even uh, or keyframe animation so um, all that stuff and uh, and it's really really uh, it's really is inspiring you know to to see that so one thing what I want to say is like if you are a person like this and you're like thinking okay you know is that kind of a program you know that kind of mentoring for me uh, like like really fucking you know send us your application think about it you know uh, because we really want to like we really want to help you know like I think like we as a studio we are already big enough and known enough to really start uh, you know taking our how to say it uh, role uh, and um, responsibly uh, in a way and, and try to like bring up something more to people's life um, and we have like two things like one is girls in the game of course you know but second thing is, is a summer internship program right that I wanted to mention like um, right now uh, oh god I don't remember the exact number no I do I do remember we had 31 interns right that we have took for the summer internship and you know those interns were for all kinds of backgrounds you know there was no like any any requirement whatsoever it was just basically the best person uh, that we can get gets the internship and uh, from 31 interns we have hired 25 of them. Uh, 25 of them stayed and became juniors in the company because they were great. They were doing well. Uh, they were learning fast. You know, it was very, very um, inspiring to see, you know, how these people develop. Uh, I talked to like a bunch of them. Uh, you know, they will be probably embarrassed that I speak about them here. <laughs> but yeah, they, they were doing like great, uh, you know, like you can see really that they really want to try and, and just want to be have a, have a chance, you know. Uh, there's this saying uh, in English that I quite like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I, maybe it's an idiom rather than saying, which is that, you know, like, it, it's really good to just, like, hold the door for someone, you know? Um, just the fact that you can get to the, you want to get to the industry and you want to learn in some ways, and, and then there is someone, you know, and you have a, you have a chance, so... Uh, like I'm so glad that we are doing it as a company because you guys, you guys see all those videos that we are posting every every month. Uh, when you have like you know the high reds, you know, <laughs> or high re high uh, high reds basically, which is like from hired um, uh, videos where we can see like how many experts, seniors, leads uh, we are hiring every month, and that's amazing. You know, I'm really glad that we are getting like the wealth of experience, you know, from all over the place. Uh, for all our studios actually so this is fucking awesome but I think it's so important like uh, for the gaming industry in general uh, that the studios are a bit more open and they are willing to take these young people and and teach them and trade them and mentor them uh, so um, I was really I, I am really glad to be adding like a very small brick you know, to this whole, uh, you know, uh, gigantic building and construction. Um, and right now we have just finished, uh, well, not just finished. We are getting closer and closer to finishing the first year because I think it finishes up in like February or so. Um, so uh, it's like last few months, you know, uh, we are we are finishing the project with, uh, with our mentees that we have. But then, you know, like just after that, we'll be uh, right now. We already opened up the recruitment for uh, girls in the game for a second year. But together with that, you know, next summer, like most likely uh, we are going to be looking for more uh, interns, you know, and and again, like it was a lot of people, right? 40, 31 people uh, taken at the same time and 25 of them, uh, you know, stayed with us. I think it's I think it's a great, uh, great number. And like some of them are actually like already working on stuff for you. Like um, uh, maybe I don't want to embarrass them too much here. But, <laughs> but some of them are like, you know, like people that are making like, uh, you know, stuff for us for the expansion already, you know. Um, I've been working with like a bunch of them, uh, you know, either on the asset side or UI side, you know, and, and so on when they're like, you know, just helping out uh, to make this expansion for you. So uh, I think it's a I think it's such an amazing way uh, to really like starting the industry.
Kogito, um, thank you so much for giving the sub to Revolver of Salata. Sorry, my friends, I'm so bad, so so behind the chat. Uh, hello, user. Hello, hello, uh, hello, user. Um, nice to have you. Tyler McVicker asks, uh, Phantom Liberty. Better than the base game story? Question mark. Tyler. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. You know, like, I hope so. Like, no promises and, and anything like this, but, uh, you know, of course, this is my fucking dream, you know, uh, to give you guys the best, the best fucking thing you can get, you know. Um, so, I, I really, uh, I really hope you will, you will enjoy it, but we will see, you know, like, you are the final judge, you know, you are the final judge. Uh, G Apollo asks how many CDPR employees are moving to Boston in the first instance. Uh, G Apollo, I don't think we have disclosed that information, so I can't share it or I won't share it. As I mentioned um, on the last stream, I think, when you guys asked about it, was that um, I will just leave the option like to, to tell the people who are moving, uh, to tell you guys like officially, publicly on like social media and stuff, uh, to be able to, to, to tell you, you know, who's moving. Uh, because I just don't want to steal their thunder, you know what I mean? Like, they have a right to, you know, just just have their moment and, and I'll just make sure that um, they can do that. It, it's a bunch, I would say. It's a bunch, uh, Giapolo. And it's it's like the people that are around the core team, you know? Uh, so, um, yes, uh, I think that's as much as I can share right now. Babsonovska, so your tweet responds to Sasha, who's g g uh, gonna voice Ash. I think it's an amazing choice for Mox radio dj so clever uh thank you babsonovska i'm glad you like it um shavy game asks uh will you add archangel samurai on the moro rogue radio oh god shavy shavy game i have to admit i have no idea what's the status of that song uh when it comes to like the um you know where in game it is uh specifically the archangel one uh, when it comes to the radios, uh, that's what I'm referring to. So sorry, I, I can't answer your question. I don't know where is it and so on. That's, as you can imagine, completely not my uh, field. Um, and I don't want to, like, you know, mis misguide you with whatever I will say. Uh, my friends, I am really trying to catch up with the chat, but this is, like, definitely difficult. Um, oh, we have Neon Arcade with us. Hello, Neon. Nice to have you. Um, Um, Uranium Bullet asks, hey Pavel, uh, this is much uh, more of a tech-related thing, but it would be great if Cyberpunk had support for direct storage in the future update for PC. This enables the game to fully utilize super-fast NVMe SSDs to drastically reduce pop-in and loading times, as well as making things easier for CPUs. This would be a great method for improving performance. Uranium Bullet, thank you for your comment. I mean. First of all, I believe, like, because you're saying uh, this enables the game to fully utilize super fast NVMe um, SSDs. Um, the, the thing is, like, because I believe that uh, my PC uh, is using an uh, uh, NVMe uh, drive uh, right now. And of course, you know, that's why it's like booting up in like a second. I think like loading the game in my PC takes around a second. Um, like I loaded the game a bunch of times on the on the stream, so you guys could see that it's definitely quick. Uh, I d I haven't been aware, but direct storage uh, at all. Uh, but you know what? I can ask. I can ask people who are, um, you know, um, I can ask people who know more about this stuff than me. Hello, Sasco Cult. Machiavelli wrote. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Okay. I hope we are not a cult yet. Okay. I hope we are not a cult yet. Uh, uh, but great to have you, Machiavelli, with us. Um, Date Bayolo. So Date Bayolo asks Pavel one question about Blue Eyed. Will we see him again? I guess you're asking about Mr. Blue Eyes. I mean, my friend. Like, if I would say something, that would be uh, a something pointing you out to what the story is about. Or, you know, so I'm not going to do that, obviously, right? Because it's a spoiler for the story. So no, no spoilers for the story, okay? 
any word on fix for map with the latest nvidia drivers uh yes so we saw this problem like right away after the nvidia uh actually published the update of their drivers we have uh, our customer support tweeted about it and posted on our page like whole way you know how to revert back to the previous uh drivers i obviously don't have any any update regarding this like this is um uh, this is on the side of uh you know nvidia my friend uh you know so i'm sorry i i really don't like i know that they are aware about the problem like this is as much as i am able to tell you you know um but you know when the update's going to be in nvidia side no idea you know uh no idea my friend this is 100 percent on their side um i would love to i would love to tell you like more precise information but i just just don't know like if you're having problem with that update please just do what our customer support advice to do um go on the customer support page there is a short uh explanation you know showing you you know how to, how to do it how to go back to the previous drivers and what drivers are are like safe uh so to say um okay uh kirkov kalashnikov i am curious uh, let's say you couldn't get Keanu back for Johnny. What would you have done? Oh God. If we wouldn't get Keanu, uh, Keanu back. Hmm. Well, I mean, so there's numerous solutions, but, uh, I'm worried that most of them are bad. <laughs> so numerous solutions. One, one solution is if, if, you know, the character is like indispensable for the story, what you are doing, you can cast a voice alike. This is how it's called in the industry. So you're casting an actor who has like a similar voice sort of to try to cover that. That is not the best solution because in most cases you can hear it really. Um, second option is try to be very flexible with like scheduling and stuff and try to like figure out why you can't can't get him back you know what is preventing it you know and try to really adjust uh you know to the schedule and be able to like actually get it you know it's of course you know problematic and so on but this is much better um, than casting voice alike um the third solution uh, that you could possibly use is to basically uh scale down amount of stuff uh you know he has so that you can catch up uh with uh you know with the amount of lines you can possibly need um so maybe that's like the third solution uh that you could that you could use um but like i think like the best solution honestly is the second one which is basically you need to be flexible uh with the scheduling when you're working with like big names uh, always uh, and be very mindful about it um, and just plan well, you know, and execute well. Of course, it's a big endeavor, uh, but I mean, close to everything is doable, uh, as always. Um, so, uh, like, I would always go into the scenario number two, you know. Um, like, scenario number three, which is, like, scaling the amount of stuff he has, is, is of course, you know, could be, like, directly impacting, like, the quality or, uh, uh, God forbid, the store line. So this is very, very, very... Uh, a dangerous area and that would be like my last 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 thing that i would want to do but the voice alike is also kind of crap as a solution so uh like my friend honestly in situations scenarios like this you know you just try to be fucking you know flex flex flexible as mr elastic from fantastic four you know that's basically how you do that um that's that's basically how you do that delamide wrote stories confirmed right uh, stories you mean like uh, levels of the building or something <laughs> in that kind of stories well i mean i'm not confirming any building with with stories though um why do we hear keanu reeves voice in phantom liberty but see a female engram in the trailer I have to admit, my friends, could you could you please explain your question uh, a bit better? Because I am very curious, actually, what you mean. We see the female engram. Okay, you mean like the female V is speaking, right? Like, and why do you hear Keanu voice in Phantom Liberty? Well, I mean, I I don't really I re don't really follow. Like, female V and Maeve Lee are the characters are the main characters of the game, um, and uh you know uh johnny silverhand voiced by keanu reeves is one of the characters and both of them speak um not really i i don't think i don't think that i'm following actually to be honest completely your logic my friend um robert uh, dolenilo wrote i love you tyler mcvicker here you go 
Uh, Tyler, some love for you on the chat. Um, I hope you receive the love. Gdomet asks, house tour at 20 followers? I mean, 20k followers? I mean, why why did you why would you guys want to fucking see my house? Like, that is... I mean, you know... I guess my house fine, but... I think it's the least important, least interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, topic about uh, about me, I would say. Um, FF06B5 mystery, uh, Nova, Nova Dice, uh, Nova Dice asks, well, yes, it's a mystery. Because there was a mystery question mark, so I can answer yes, it's a mystery. That's, uh, that is a mystery still, uh, I think. Uh, are characters in CP77 modeled after real models apart from Keanu? Uh, Appletish asks, well, my friend, so there's actually really a lot of people uh, in Cyberpunk who are uh, in various ways, you know, modeled after real people. You had, we had, of course, you know, Jesse Cox, Alana Pierce, um, Con Carnage uh, in the game with their faces. There's actually a ton of different developers who are actually in the game. I'm not because uh, my face is too generic. Uh, but, but you know, there's a lot of different like devs, you know, who are in the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's there's there's lots of people. Like, um, if you are asking if there are people to the point, oh yeah, of course, you know, Hide, uh, Hideo Kojima. Um, so like, there is like bunch of people who are uh, in the game based on the real people. Um, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, I. Um, I am literally so behind in the chat that uh, I, I just can't see anything. Your voices. Uh, Tyler, I'm not sure what you mean, uh, but um, sure. Um... Oh, my voice is in the game. How could you forget? Yes, I am in the... I am in the my voice is in the game and I won't forget that, Tyler. Um, but thank you. <laughs> um... Uh, Ricky asks, can I know why a message can be sent in the chat? It says it conflicts with moderation settings. Uh, I mean, Ricky, to be honest, I have no idea. Like, I don't seem to, uh, like, anyone else doesn't seem to have problems with sending your, their messages. And honestly, like, we have pretty uh, forgiving, I would say, moderation settings, uh, my friend. So, like, I, I don't think, like, there's, like, we have the Nightbot on, uh, though, because Nightbot is, like, posting sometimes, you know, things on the chat and stuff. So maybe Nightbot is preventing you, like, try to write your question different ways. Um, like, I can't imagine why you, you couldn't uh, post it. What is your opinion on birds who sing songs? Appletish, I don't know what you're asking about, or or do I? I don't know. I, I think we will just move on from this question. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> Detroit become human seventy seven. Pablo, I know you can't say anything. Oh my, my man, about Cyberpunk sequel. My man, you know everything. But do I believe it's going to be bigger and more massive? My man, you know, that that is completely not the sphere that I want yet, and more realistic than Cyberpunk Part One. My man, no uh, no answer for this, but uh, hey, uh, <laughs> uh, you guys are the best, honestly. Like, I think, like, um, I was telling it to Revolver before, but, like, I think, like, half of the fucking chat could be, like, investigated, uh, investigating, uh, investigative journalists, you know? Like, you could, you could really, like, find your, um, uh, future careers are waiting. Uh, that's as much as I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, future careers are waiting. Pavel dodge the face can they avoid being sp being sw swapped in the joy toy scenes pinky julian wrote well i mean so pinky julian uh i'm not sure if i would dodge the face can maybe but you know like my face is too generic i'm just like you know i, I just look like some guy uh you know no, no, nothing too interesting so whatever um uh, Machiavelli asks, have you guys rewritten some of the Johnny's lies since Keanu has come back? I would love if Johnny uses V's real name time to time in the main story. It would be a huge opportunity to add more context to their relationship. I know Machiavelli, you want it. You mentioned that, uh, I think, very often, <laughs> I can say. Um, regarding the rewriting some lines, well, I mean, I don't think I can tell you that, unfortunately. You know, we are working on the game, yes, that's correct. Yes, uh, we are working on the game, my friend. 
And I, I, I absolutely agree with you uh, when it comes to, you know, saying these name. That's, um, uh, that's, that makes sense. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, another person who's also, like, kind of uh, very, very sneaky and clever, Tango. So Tango wrote, hey, I know that you cannot talk about future content. Here, here you go. You know, everything. <laughs> but think about, think about uh, opening more places in the city. There's so many blocked doors. I need an incentive to explore the city one more time. Uh, well, I mean, it's a very, very cool uh, cool uh, question and aspect, uh, Tango. There's a bunch of, bunch of different things, you know. It's not about us actually, like, trying and wanting to really, like, keep the, the places locked, right? Like, we naturally would want to fucking open everything. Um, it's it's a it's few things. First of all, is that we will have to add shit ton more uh, graphics prefabs. Basically, the, the what prefabs are uh, for those who don't know are um, <laughs> I don't know actually how to explain it <laughs> for people who don't know. Prefabs are a system of creating basically box in a box system that allows you to basically create very complex level structures sort of some engines have it red engine does um so basically what we have to do add bazillion fucking more interiors what it would what it would cause a significant ram uh, memory usage uh, spike in a frame rate drop and it's incredibly incredibly the night city is already incredibly packed it is the most dense and the biggest um city that was i think ever created i don't think it, what can compete with that um you know um, it, all other cities that we have in games are very flat or very simple or very basic when it comes to like graphical fidelity um, just because of that so first thing is is just technical you know like this it, the game needs to run first and foremost second aspect my friend is simply a production uh, aspect is that it, this is an insane amount of work you know adding this much uh, um, more if we are talking because uh, you you mentioned like opening much more uh, i'm right now talking about possibly like opening everything um <laughs> you know it's just it's just an incredible amount of work to make it done you know it's basically years it's years of work uh but you know doing that work is pointless because the game wouldn't run you know it's just way 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 too big and too much you know for it to handle so there's always there's always a limit you know you always as a dev you need to like balance very carefully you know what you're actually putting into your game uh, with the fidelity you know how it works actually you need to make sure that you guys can play it well and have fun with it um because you wouldn't want to like enter every interior but not be able to run your game right like i don't think that's what you want so uh, i hope i explained it well enough you know but i'm not saying um i'm not saying that this is impossible i am this is at all uh, uh this is what i what i didn't say right um because we have for instance other departments you know uh for you uh in patch 1.5 was it i believe right and those are like big locations you know big prefabs with a lot of graphics there a ton of ton of new interactions inside you know some new animations and so on this is all using the memory obviously uh and it, it was doable uh, it was doable but we are we are we are talking about four uh four apartments right um and you asked about opening many more i talked about like possibly opening a lot of them so uh, of course you know the scope is really really important here um uh, but we really need to be mindful about like um you know production reality how long how much work it takes and then you know making sure it actually runs well uh, my friends i am so fucking behind in this chat tracks media tracks media asks Sup there, my dude. Uh, sup there, tracks media. I have uh, rarely ever seen a more hype uh, guys than you, guy than you, or really. And I'm all for it. I love you. I love you the most at the PAX Witcher panel, which I religiously watch every year since it came out. Oh, I'm so glad, tracks. I'm so glad that you you watch it. You know, like not that many people actually saw that panel. You know. Um, do you remember tracks when like uh, Gerald fucking kicked me out of the stage? <laughs> Uh, uh, throw me out. I, I think it was. Um, I think it was a uh, Mal cosplay uh, cosplaying as Gerald, who like leads me out. You know, on the stage, he kicks me out uh, there. I, I like the. I, I hope you like the, the the behind the scenes stories I told uh, on the stage. I'm glad they allowed me to tell it. You know, like the. Uh, you know, the do you remember tracks the uh, situation about The Witcher Two and the and the Dick Forest? 
I hope you remember. It's a very, very interesting story. You know, like, not, not, not that many people know it, so hey. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, um, I see already a question from ULL8098. Uh, oh, God, I'm, I'm scrolling this chat. Uh, regarding 1.7. Uh, thank you. I'm so glad that someone has um, that someone has uh, you know asked about 1.7. Finally, you know, I was uh, you guys are completely out of shape, and we are already on the stream 49 minutes, and literally that's the first time I see a 1.7. Despicable, despicable. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much, Cyberpunk, uh, Cyberpunk for the prime, my friend. Uh, so Cyberpunk uh, just <laughs> subbed. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, um, I think doing these interiors correctly through the engine use the correct way of optimization would elevate the memory usage. Well, I mean, uh, absolutely, like doing something correctly would give the correct results. I, I believe that we all agree with that. It's just simply uh, difficult and very, very, um, you know, already, like I would say, resource consuming when it comes to the, the, the power of the machines, you know. Um, <laughs> I think the game should add Sasko Sneak. I mean, it means gun blazing. Okay, cool. <laughs> sure. You can like, uh, you can, you, you can, uh, you can, you know, you can role play that, uh, you know, even now. So, hey. Um, Zemigl. Zemigl wrote, hi, Pavo. Huge fan here. Um, that's nice. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I hope uh, you like our games. Uh, have the team at CDPR consider adding custom waypoint icons on the map for places like Afterlife, Coyote. Outside of the quest, I never know where some of them are. Very interesting question, Zemigl. Uh, we actually did talk about it, uh, but as you as you see in 1.6, it didn't come out. Um, you know uh, um, uh, the uh, so it's not that you know it's something that uh, has been how would you say it ready, uh, but it's not. Um, but it is not something I may uh, I am ready to share any information about yet. You know, we as a team we definitely talked about it. You know, the fact that if we are going to do anything like this or not, it's uh, it's up for uh, question. You know, a lot of players have been pointing out that um, you know Cyberpunk didn't uh, do the, didn't do uh, a god good job enough when it comes to uh, a sense of wonder. You know, and sense of um, how do you call it? Um, um, just just encouraging you as a player to explore. So this kind of icons would be like yet another thing on a map. Of course, you know, we can add it to the filters, we can make them disabled by default. Of course, there are ways to do that, right? I'm not saying there's there's no way to, to do this. Um, it's just I would say there were more important things to handle first. So that's as much as I can mention. Uh, my friends, um, my friend, as I, as I, uh, I wanted to emphasize, I'm not confirming or denying anything that we are doing here. Uh, I just said that we discussed it. Um, uh, Vibranium Shield, a very interesting nickname. Vibranium Shield asks, are you guys aware that the female character model breaks when wearing dresses that go above the neck? There is a separation of uh, head, neck, Clavis from her uh, from her body. Hmm. I mean, we do know about like some issues, uh, and our character team was like very di diligently fixing that. If you know about any like long dresses that break around the neck, if you could please like send it to our customer support so that we know what you are exactly what you exactly mean. Because like from your descriptions, it sounds like actually quite serious and and looks quite ugly. Uh, but I don't know if we are aware of, or of that problem so i think it uh, would be best if you could just you know poke our customer support and mention hey you know i'm seeing this problem can you choose forward to uh, whoever it concerns and it will be forwarded to us and we'll uh, take a look what is going on mm, reach route d interesting reach route d asked why did this hair design change Damn, I have no idea, to be honest, um, my friend. That's not a question really for me. Like, um, I think only our character artist, maybe our, our director would be able to answer. Like, I assume, like, it's always, it's the same as always, which is that um, we are doing it in scenarios when 
we want the uh, you know the character to look better, not worse. Uh, and it must be must have been that our uh, character artists and our director they believed that it would be better like this. Um, that's my assumption um, because those things don't change by themselves. So um, yes, um, so I I would assume so. You know that's that's the case, uh, my friend. Uh, Mar Yan uh, 767 Roy, uh, writes, Hey, can you please let the secret out? Okay, it starts dangerously. And tell if Cyberpunk has a good ending, had a good ending to the game itself where V survives, or is everyone in Night City doomed to a tragic end? Hmm. So, uh, Mar Marjan, Marjan, or, or maybe, maybe uh, are you simply Marian? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're just Marian. So, Marian. The thing is, uh, the endings that the game has right now are the endings that we originally planned. I am not aware, and I was working on this game from the very beginning. Uh, uh, I am not aware about any other endings being planned where uh, anything else happens uh, like this. Our assumption was, and our plan was, that we really wanted to tell a dystopian story um, to set up a uh, understanding of the IP in a very very proper way uh in um you know for the players you know so you can see actually what noir uh cyberpunk stories are you know how those stories are constructed um and cyberpunk offers like value um in different places than survival you know um there's actually lots of very interesting like i would say essays you know about the topic uh, marian what i could encourage you maybe to check is the one from the washington post about um one of the writers, um, uh, Gene, uh, what Gene talked about is like the cancer um, a treatment that he was going through. And the fact that, you know, uh, how cyberpunk actually tells the story about inevitable end um, and how it is for you to actually define, you know, what you are going to do about that, you know, and how you're going to tackle this. Um, and that was always like our kind of goal and idea you know out of many other things obviously right what a game is about and what is what are the main threats and so on um and there's a lot of like very i would say on point analysis already out there um pointing out you know actually what we did and why um like this i understand that it can be frustrating that there's no other ending you know available and i i completely get you my friend but this is you know this is what art is you know uh, for me like you know, I, I can't imagine people talking to Shakespeare and being like, you know, why, why Juliet poisoned herself? Uh, you know, why did she poison herself? Why Romeo committed suicide? You know, sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm spoiling you guys a few hundred years old um, uh, art. I, I hope you know Romeo and Juliet. But what I'm trying to say is, is like, you know, sometimes, you know, what you want to do is a bit more important and the story that you want to tell rather than actually uh giving the audience like just the happy ending you know um like we recognized when working on on the game uh how important it is to actually like you know make the story that we wanted to make and tell the story because this is what you guys expect from us right like i don't think that you expect us to uh, at least i believe so right i believe that you do not expect us to give you um, you know exactly what you want and what you ask for and and uh, you know nothing else you, you just want to be surprised you want to be um, excited you want to be seduced you want to be thrilled you know you want to love the characters you want to hate the characters you know you want to go through the emotions this is what I think the as an as an audience you know um, like I want from a piece of art, you know, like when I'm watching a very sad movie or when I'm watching a very sad, but uh, playing very sad game, you know, it makes me sad, obviously, but it also makes me think about things, you know, um, and, and, and again, think about this situation as in terminal illness, you know, like I know that probably a lot of you do view chooms is just like young guys and, and girls, you know, and and you just simply don't think about stuff like that you know uh, every single day i'm already 37 so you know like i slowly start thinking about death you know that's how it is in my age uh, but but you know you will you will you'll get there you know eventually and and um just just uh this is what this is what our story of you was supposed to be i hope i answered it um 
<laughs> Jesus Sasko, uh, thank you. I hope that uh, I answered your question. Um, Roxa Six Sensei wrote, "Sad, there's only one expansion for Cyberpunk." <sighs> I mean, we talk about it every single stream. I think uh, you know since long time. Uh, what I can tell you, my friend. I mean, it's the um, it's the way of the it's the way of the universe. You know. Um, like I hope that I hope you will be happy. You know what we have in store, uh, what, what we have planned in store for you. Um, like nobody wants to let you down. You know, like uh, believe me, nobody wants to let you down. We want to, you know, give you like awesome shit um, with every single thing that we are doing. You know, even fucking like those small patches that we are doing for you. You know, um, well, some of them were not that small, uh, to be frank, but. <laughs> But uh, yeah, even all of those patches and so on, we always want to just, just you know, give you like, give you like good, good shit, you know. That's the that's the goal. So um, let us let us see, you know, let us see what you guys say um, after the after the expansion, you know. Anyway, um, Jesus Christ, I'm so behind in this chat. Um, Scatty thirty thirty seven. Interesting, Scatty. Uh, hello, uh, good to have you with us, and thank you for the sub, my friend. Uh, Hades asks about one of the previous questions. Oh, Jesus. Um, I think the pronunciation of the name of V might be a problem for some players. The game does a pretty good job of aligning the player and the protagonist, and V's name works against that connection. Why do you think so, Hades? Because, yes, I, I think you identified it correctly. That was the goal, right? Our, I, our goal was to, um, like, associate V's name with the player, no matter of the of the, um, the character that you have built, you know, no matter of the body type, of the voice, of, uh, you know, your story that you have picked, of whatever story that you have built. Mm -hmm. So why do you think the V's name doesn't work uh, in here? I'm not really, I'm not really sure what you mean. Uh, I'm curious, actually, to learn, you know, uh, because maybe... You know, maybe it's absolutely the way you said, you know. I want to actually know who that person was who came into the office and said that this is fucking amazing and wanted the the, uh, the dig forest in the game. Srax Media. Yeah, I know who that person is. That person is, is of course, you know, working in the company, as I mentioned, was uh, was a director. But I don't think I can say it, uh, Trax Media. So I, I, I want, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Trax Media. I will just restrain myself from answering this question um and maybe you know when 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 witcher is like 50 years old you know and when we do a panel for like 50 years of the witcher ip and then maybe i can i can speak about it anyhow maybe maybe then i can speak about it um Okay, um, da, 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 da. Uh, Detroit Became Human asks a chum I have to know for extended romance interactions, especially with the mods for Judy Panam River and Carrie. Is it possible to make interactions work without mods, like sleeping with your partners? Interactions work? Uh, well, I mean, so sleeping with your partners. So the way it works is like that was shipped already in 1.5. Uh, when you go to sleep, there is a big chance, depending on the status of your relationship, that you wake up next to your loving person. So that's there. So I'm actually not really fully grasping your question. You're asking if it's possible to make interactions work without mods, like sleeping with your partners. Um, hmm. Um, sorry, Detroit Become Human. Could you rephrase, please? Um, I will try to answer the question uh, if I see it rephrased, because I'm um, not sure what you're asking about. Uh, if you're asking about more interactions, like even more than what you have done already, uh, I mean, let us do the expansion for you, please. <laughs> it's a mod, Tyler wrote. Yes, I, I, I know it's a mod, uh, but, you know, uh, hard to hard to say much more uh, what um, Detroit meant. Kushiks, I wonder if the plat uh, if the Phantom Liberty, I literally read it as a platform liberty, uh, I wonder if the Phantom Liberty will be enabled just as Blood and Wine in Witcher 3, or would you need to finish the main story first? Kushiks, I can talk about it, my friend. Do you see this vein? I can talk about it. Uh, I can talk about it. Uh, of course, you know, my friend, it will be done the way so that you guys can have fun. And it will be done the way that makes sense. That's what I really want to do, okay? 
I can talk about the, the future content. No info about Phantom Liberty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you playing Witcher 3 after this game? So, we need to finish Cyberpunk. And then if we'll manage before the expansion, <laughs> then, then I would love to like do some, some Witcher 3 for sure. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we'll manage, maybe we won't. Uh, so we'll see basically, but that's the plan. Yeah. So like still, you know, when you finish Cyberpunk, then, you know, the next will be either Witcher 3 next gen update or the uh, Phantom Liberty expansion. Uh, so we'll see how we are, you know, with the timing and everything. So, um, I would, I would, I definitely would love to play Witcher 3 with you chooms because I have so much stories there and um, I think it would be fanta fucking fantastic, you know, to just meet here, have some have some Witcher music, you know, playing instead of cyberpunk music, you know, and, and so on. I need to switch the chair though to, this, uh, to the Witcher one, I, I don't have the Witcher chair yet. Uh, cyberpunk uh, gifted a sub to Bornham777, thank you so much cyberpunk for that. Um, Machiavelli asks, how did Takimura stayed very honorable years of being close bodyguard of degenerate like Saburo? Mm, good question. I think it's more of a question to Philip Weber, uh, who designed that, than me. Yeah. Good point, Machiavelli, though. I think there is some answer for it, but I'm not really sure what is the answer, to be completely frank. Just maybe a bit too uh, detailed, you know, for me. Um, because that's, that's something that Philip designed, so we would need him to answer it. Um, Drelovs asks, Pavel, I need some advice. Okay, that's perfect, you know, I hope it's a dating advice, because, uh, frankly, I specialize in those. Last week, I started a new school project, God damn it. Um, I have been assigned as a producer, game director, and is my task to lead a group of 15 game dev students in creating a 3D game video game in 14 weeks. Okay, do you maybe have that dating question actually instead? Because like, holy fuck. <laughs> do you have tips and could help me lead a team of a game devs as best as possible? <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> okay. So the problem is, this is a really fucking big task. Like you are literally becoming from day to day like a head of an indie studio that has 15 game dev students. So imagine 15 juniors that you need to put on the same page. Okay, this is this would take me like around like seven to eight years of lectures to actually teach you. So what we are going to do is 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 I'm going to answer this question differently. Go to the YouTube and search for a speech by Jakub Tomczak. Jakub Tomczak is one of my designers in open world team. Kuba was a director of a team who uh, have done the uh, mod for Gothic 2 Chronicles of Mirthana. What Kuba had to do, he had to be a game director, as you said, of the 40 people team that was switching and changing, people that were completely, you know, from different sides, and he has done a wonderful job. And he, in that talk, explains how you have, how he has done it, like what uh, actually he has done it. There is a ton of very good advice there, um, and honestly, like, I think that I would start there. Um, like the most important thing that you need to take care take care of is vision alignment and communication. Those are like two most important things that you have to do. So uh, make sure that when you have some kind of an idea for the game, to try to formulate it in a short form and make sure that everyone in the team understands it. You know, have a conversations with them deep conversations about how you're going to do those things and make sure that people are on the same page. This is fucking horribly difficult task uh, because you, as I understand, you probably don't have much experience with that and you already have 15 people in your team. So, but anyway, you need to like formulate the vision of the game and then make sure that they understand what they are building. Okay, talk to them and explain every single person together and have one-to-one -one meetings with them if needed and explain it to them. And then every single time something changes, let's say you, uh, you're you adding something to, 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 to the game. You decided that you need a triple jump, you know, um, in, a, in a game, or you need, a, you want to add a functional bathrooms, you know, I don't know. Let's say you're adding functional bathrooms to your game. 
make sure that you basically very clearly explain it to them, write down the design and explain to them why, what for, what is the goal, and always ask yourself a question, okay, how it works together with a core of the of co uh, with core of the project and communicate. And really, Drillovs, over communicate if you have to. Lose Use every fucking possible channel. Talk to them in person. Use Slack. Use some kind of Jira project. Uh, you you know Kanban. You know whatever like project, um, uh, you know produ production tool you have in mind. You know all the possible ways. It's called uh, uh, communication escalation. So what you do? You talk to them in person. You make a meeting. Then you, what you do? You send an email that explains it. You make a presentation that they can always refer to. You record that fucking meeting when you talk about it so they can always refer to it. Your job is vision, vision alignment, and communicating that vision. Super difficult, man. <laughs> I wish you luck. And if you would need dating advice, actually, instead, just come back and then we can talk. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, good luck. I'm really, really, really keeping my fingers crossed for you, uh, my friend. Um, which was the hardest map to make in Witcher 3, including expansion packs? Twitch Horizon asks. Um, map? Well, I believe it would be hmm, the hardest to make. I actually don't know what, which one would be the hardest. I think it could have been Kaer Morhen. And there is many, many different, different reasons why it would be Kaer Morhen. Uh, one thing is because Kaer Morhen was already in the Witch 1. So what we have done, actually, we have like exported the whole mesh from the Witch 1, you know, uh, to really like make it, um, uh, to really have it and import it in, into the, like the engine and place that really, really old mesh in the level of Kaer Morhen and start working around it. Like, I know because I was one of the guys that was working. I mean, I was one of the guys doing the quests for Kaer Morhen. I did the Battle of Kaer Morhen. So for me, the structure of the location was extremely important. I knew that they can't change the location too much. You know, I had to do some changes because otherwise the game wouldn't work. Um, but of course, you know, I wanted to pay attention and make sure that it actually is, you know, uh, done properly. And guys, I have so much fucking information I can give you about this. But anyway, there's like, do you know, like, I think in which one, you know, you know how the um, reflection in the lake has been done? It was a copied Care More and placed upside down. Yep. Inside the lake. That's basically how it was done, you know, so that so that it will be actually reflecting properly because we didn't have a reflections at that time. You know, this is like fucking what, uh, 2004 or something? Um, 2005? Because I think the game was released 2007, if I'm not wrong. So that's like 2004, 2005 uh, when it was when it was done. But anyway, so when I when I, when I actually um, hello Creep Slasher, nice to have you with us. So when I actually like worked on the um, oh, we were when we were working on that care more and like I need to like follow everything that was connected to the which one you know and making sure that I'm actually really um, uh, like very respectfully treating like base material basically uh, but also like I did a lot of different things so did you guys find did you guys find did you guys play the which one first question and did you guys find a grave of one of the young witchers that dies there. Did you guys find it? Yes? Okay. Question. So question. Do you know where it's positioned? Do you know where it's positioned? The uh, the grave. Exactly. Because I don't know if you realize that. Uh, but I was like... I was like sick enough uh, to basically go over the Witcher 1. And like place it, layer it over Witcher 3. Exactly. Leo. And I have, uh, no, that's Leo, that's not Berengar. Um, and I have exactly like placed Leo like close to the place where he dies, basically, all right? So that you as a player, you can find it and so on. Um, so that was the, uh, that was a really, really fucking amazing. Uh, like, I love that. I love doing that kind of stuff. But anyway, okay, another question from Witcher 3. Another question from Witcher 3, my chums. So, fucking quiz. So, do you remember the sex scene with the wolves? Yennefer and the wolves. Yes, I hope you do. Okay. Did you go to the place 
where that scene happens, where the wolves are. Did you did you ever seen that? Did you did you realize what happens there? Of course, Pavel. Oh, oh, really? The unicorn? No, no, no. That's not the scene. Uh, the unicorn is in Skellige, and the unicorn is in my quest. I'm very happy. Family friendly stream, yes, that's for sure. Um, the sex scene with wolves? No. Ritzerski boom. My friend. Sex scene with Yennefer with the wolves. So, <laughs> so what I wanted to say. Did you, so I, I want to think, uh, anyway, what you can do, you can basically go to that place where that, um, after that, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, sex scene happens, you can just go and uh, check the, um, uh, check, you know, how the wolves are doing in, in the bushes. Anyway, you guys still didn't find all the secrets in Witcher 3. Are you aware of that? I think you, you are, you are not. But, you know, I mean, give you, give you, give you like three more years, maybe you will. Uh, and, and then, you know, maybe 10 more for Cyberpunk, uh, so... Um, <laughs> excellently asked has entered the chat, Machiavelli wrote, uh, yes, uh, exactly. I am worried about Pavel, DJ Gdu wrote. Why? Why are you worried about me? Why are you worried about me? <laughs> After the next gen, uh, The Witcher 3. You had sex with a furry? Uh, interesting. Uh, that's. I don't think that this is what happened um, um, in the game. Uh, uh, Chupamar. Uh, but anyway, Amichi82. Thank you so much, my friend, for the sub. <laughs> I appreciate it. What is the biggest accomplishment for the dev team for Cyberpunk? Oh man, I think it would be Bunch. But like one of the. Two, I think I can maybe as a point number one probably like exec will put like two things. I would say. One thing is the interactive scene system for first-person perspective storytelling. It was like a ton of fucking prototyping and making it together and producing like this really complex tech to be able to tell the story in first person uh, the way we have it, you know, to really animate it like this, to have all the choices, you know, um, uh, with you and be really close to the characters when we need it and coming up with all those rules. That was like months and months of prototyping and like finding out the proper place and then took us like probably two years before we actually get it to polish level sort of uh, so that's one thing but second thing that is on the same level i would say of accomplishment is the night city the night city is i think and again guys correct me if i'm wrong is i think the biggest and the most complex and the most advanced mega city ever built in the video games I've never seen any city come close. Um, in most cases, even when they're like bigger space-wise, they're very flat, very simple box buildings with no interiors. You can just pass through and nothing happens there. Um, when it comes to Cyberpunk, so much more, ga uh, you know, it's all just, um, you know, much bigger, like I think graphic fidelity, you know, all of those gigantic buildings, you know, uh, like AVs flying in, a, in, in the background, you know, no fucking loading screens at all in that city no matter where you go like this is like there is a reason why nobody else has done it outside of us and i'm you know honestly i'm eagerly waiting for anyone to repeat this uh for anyone to to really do that you know um so anyhow uh i think those are two biggest those are like this is the, the biggest accomplishments of uh cyberpunk those two things like the city and the, the first person perspective storytelling uh those two things were like fucking ton of work uh my friends uh barry fox wrote x letalis will find it i know barry i know x letalis is great in that stuff actually this chum has done like so much fucking investigative uh work you know, for uh, for our games in general. So um, I would just love him to do that kind of stuff about cyberpunk as well. You know, there's just fucking to document it. It What mission was that? Enola asks. Oh, God, I don't remember the name. Um, it's the one when you're like back to the uh, Kermoran. Enola, for the first time. Uh, yes, am I correct? Yes. Your first time uh, after basically getting the ugliest man alive. 
Uh, what, what, what about with third, third person? Well, I mean, Rycerski Boom, we didn't want to, like, make it for a third person, right? First person is easier, so we didn't want to go easier, basically. That's uh, as simple as that, you know? We have done three games and a bunch of expansions, you know, for the games. I'm talking about the Witcher 1 right now, Witcher 2, Witcher 3, both expansions. Uh, Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 Enhanced Editions. Uh, we, we have done a bunch of games, expansions, um, Enhanced Editions with the Witcher, with the third person uh, perspective, storytelling. There was a time for to do something new, you know, and just push our medium forward, you know. And again, like, I am a believer that we should be doing that. Like, we are the company that does that kind of shit, you know. Like, we want to go, like, I don't want to, like, reheat the same fucking, you know, uh, chicken cutlet or, like, the same schabove for you and just serve you the same schabove every few fucking uh, years, you know. Like, we are the company that I want to, like, you know, cook you fucking some, you know, delicious nigiri, and I want to, you know, um, I don't know, uh, uh, cook you some delicious kombucha, and, uh, you know, some uh, delicious pierogi, right, and, and serve it together, you know, so that you can have lots of different things, rather than fucking reheat that tzhabove all the time, you know what I mean, like, do you get it, like, we are not the company, you are, like, we are basically, like, this fucking Michelin star restaurant that you go to, you go to basically to get this, like, beetroot with, like, uh, uh, sugar on top of it, you know, and be delighted, you know, um, and, and be happy and be like, wow, this is, like, you know, really something completely different. We are not, like, I don't know, uh, um, I don't want to offend anyone, but we were not McDonald's, you know, um, you know, or uh, that's the way it, it works for me. I hope that those uh, comparisons really, uh, you know, speak to you, my friends. This is how it works, you know. So my motivation is no fucking sabove for you. No sabove, no sabove, you know, no sabove. Delicious dishes. That's the fucking idea. Okay, you know, Pavelaka, Gordon Ramsay. Exactly. Today we have a fucking Gordon Ramsay as a as, as a game design classes. You know the fucking salt. You know the salt. Yeah, you see me doing that. That's basically the fucking our design. That's what we are doing. Yes, um, this is how this is how we go about it. Anyway, my friends, you know, that that's the answer for third person perspective storytelling. We have done it so many times, you know. Um, it was a time for something fucking awesome. See, <laughs> Kogito wrote Kotaku. CDPR Dev criticizes food in Boston. I mean, uh, we'll see. I hope that they have some uh, Polish food in in Boston. I even checked that there are some Polish shops. So, uh, anyway. Um, Drelovs asks, uh, who is the evil person in CBR who created extreme cosplay quest in Death March difficulty in The Witcher 3? Oh, uh, man, uh, that was Rafał Jankowski, um, my uh, quest designer, my team. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember reviewing that quest, man. I was, I think I was in like um, normal difficulty level and I was getting my ass handed to me all the time. Like I was getting my ass as handed to me all the time and I was asking Rafa okay we just need to we, we just need to make it easier seriously this is not like I'm not able to even review this quest because I'm getting killed constantly um so so it got like so you guys didn't play the version I played you know by the way you guys didn't play the version with the fucking frog prince I played you know and you laugh of me when I when I play cyberpunk on, on a very hard difficulty level you know like you don't know how it is to play you don't know how it is to play um, the um, uh, the game that is in development, you know, and the balancing is not there and you're trying to review that stuff, uh, you know, and you're like sitting together and you're just getting beaten all the fucking time, you know? So yes, uh, here training, training, basically playing on the stream is a very, is a very good training for me. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> it's a very good training for me. Uh, yeah, Sasko Ramsey. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you guys like my, um, I, I'm glad you guys like my food comparison. Um, uh, Vudim wrote the frog, <laughs> the frog prince, Moncas. Yes, uh, the, the frog, frog prince was uh, definitely, definitely out of there. Uh, by the way, the uh, next Cyberpunk will be exclusively worked on at the Boston studio or in Poland too, Lazarus wrote. Uh, Lazarus, I mentioned that in my tweet about me moving to Boston. So I mentioned that we will be working with the Boston, in the Boston team, primarily with our Vancouver crew. And those are like two main studios, I guess, that will be developing it. However, Warsaw is going to be cooperating. So um, the answer is basically yes and no <laughs> to your question. 
like it's not on going to be only Boston, but Boston is the main one uh, that will be developing it. Pavel admitted you're just not good. Oh, thanks, Asha. I can always count on you, you know, when it comes to uh, when you want to, you know, uh, support me. <laughs> um, Pavel, what is your personal more important? Fully voiced dialogue scenes with great facial and body animations with fewer dialogue options, modern AAA RPGs, or more dialogue options, but with worse animations and maybe not voice made character, mainly older RPGs. I mean, Misho, the thing is, my for me, the proper way is to going number uh, going with a first path, however, providing you with enough paths and making it really feel proper. That's the way for me, honestly. Like, I am not a fan of very clunky, badly animating characters or badly voiced, voiced or not voiced. Why? Because I want to give you guys emotions. That's our goal. We want to, like, get you thrilled and excited and seduced and sad and angry and crying and happy and cheerful. This is what we want to do. Can you get cheerful when something is really fucking clunky and you look at it and you have this obvious like, um, you know, um, uncanny valley feeling that you're like, oh yeah, this is just some, you know, it, it's, it's, you wouldn't ever believe those are actual real characters, you know? So like, for me, the option number one, going like actual like high fucking quality thing, this is the way to do, to go, but not with fewer options. And again, always, 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 old type, kinda old fashioned, really like, how do you say it, not immersive, I would say, uh, RPGs or games in general, because though not only RPGs do that, will always have more options. Why? Because it's just so much cheaper, you know, to just like add stuff basically that you're not even voicing in any way or animating in any way and characters are just stiff looking at each other and whatever. Of course, you know, this will always have more options. But I think that there is a path between those two. And then there is a path when there's enough cool shit, you know, for you as a player to really feel that you have an impact on the story, that you have choices, consequences, that you have a space for role-playing while still keeping the um, immersion, you know, and being in the character and really feeling those people and then feeling those emotions, you know, and having, as we were discussed, having all those delicious dishes, you know, because that, that's the way for me to go. Like, uh, that's, that's what I believe in. Um, and again, I'm not a fan of like overdoing the cinematograph cin cinematography side of things, you know, because that in very, very, very often becomes incredibly limiting um, and you end up just um, having less things that are like interesting for the players. So I'm not a fan of that. Uh, not at all, uh, to be honest. So I think there is a safe balance uh, that can be uh, struck you know, here, between you actually going, like, ridiculously, you know, towards, like, cinematography, like, uh, where, you know, there's almost no budget left or no space left, you know, for you to have any choices, consequences, any ways of role-playing, and actually giving players enough of, of cool options, um, you know, to play. I really think it's doable, honestly, my friend. So, Misho, 8723, that's my answer. Um, Pierogi's with bacon. Bits smothered with salted onions and sour cream yum. Uh, Witcher Sink I said, yes, uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, Krushvitz says, well, yes, but actually no. Uh, thank you, Krushvitz. That's exactly what I meant. Like, you just fucking grasp the, the, the soul of, of what I meant. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler just subbed. Thank you, my friend, uh, for the sub. Uh, it's, I really appreciate you being with us, you know. And so you are always bringing a lot of life, you know, to the chat with uh, your jokes, uh, which I, I really appreciate that. Can you show your shirt back and front? I mean, on the back, I don't have much. So that's the back of my shirt. And on the front, this is I got my hands on The Witcher 3. Uh, the Wild Hunt. This is the shirts that we've been given, sort of, we made them for the... Uh, hands-on event for The Witcher 3. I believe that was like um, beginning of 2015, my friend. Hmm. Camille Cesaro asks, um, as a player, not developer, oh god, tricky fucking questions, what would you prefer to see in Cyberpunk 2077? New Game Plus mode or repeatable quests, like random generated gigs, quests from the fortune 
Teller and Pacifica Kill Finder Never Ending and CPD Activities. As a player, probably I would, uh, as a player, I would probably enjoy more the repeatable activities, I think, than New Game Plus. I think so. Like the things that can be in the game. Uh, and, and I can have fun just, you know, like I'm in between, you know, some things that I'm doing, you know, like, I don't know, putting the child to sleep, you know, walking with the dog and then I have like 20 minutes to just like run around in Night City and have fun and just want to be in that world again, uh, you know, uh, I would probably prefer, you know, and by repeatable activities, I don't mean the generated gigs specifically. What, what I mean by that is like the way for you as, as a player to just be in the world and actually have stuff happen. Uh, even when I would see that it's maybe like not like super fucking high quality stuff, but I would be like, okay, but it's still, you know, stuff is happening and so on. And I can always have, uh, have something to do, even if I would understand as a player. Probably that, yeah, it's just impossible for the devs to deliver, like, one million hours of story. Um, so, uh, it, it makes sense that, you know, some things are repeating and so on. I think this would be my preference, really. Um, from those two options, of course, Camille, uh, that you provided. Uh, but again, as a player, <laughs> as I mentioned. Um, better, better with Kinect. Better with Kinect Road, the way the music, animation, and environment all came together to push emotions onto me as a player was unparalleled. I can't even describe how you guys pulled off making me feel soulless on one of the endings. Uh, thank you, Better with Kinect. We really, really uh, tried to do our best. When are you moving to US? As I mentioned, um, we need to first finish ship the Phantom Liberty expansion and then we'll talk. <laughs> Danku asks delicious dishes uh, again no shabove I mean well I guess some shabove can be can be delicious I'm not denying that you know I've been in places that serve pretty delicious shabove but it's still a pretty uh, you know typical dish I would say uh, the dish that you've seen in many different ways done and again again and again you know sometimes having something you know that was served to you many many times before is nice you know um, so definitely there is a space for games to do that kind of stuff as well. By the way, uh, guys, I want to tell, talk to you about actually something. So do you know what the Maya principle uh, is? The Maya principle. The Maya principle is basically building uh, something, whatever you're actually building, that, and I can use percentages here to explain it maybe uh, a bit clearly, when 20% of whatever you're building is very innovative, new, uh, opens new doors, you know, makes you see new things. But 80% of this is familiar. And this is what Maya principle is. Like combining those two together makes you, gives you something that is like a thing that kind of you knew, you know, but it has some kind of new twist, you know, with it. So for instance, like, mm, uh, you know, it's like a shabove, but you, you, you know, together with that, you have some, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, a coated uh, a beetroot and, and something, you know, intriguing um, together with that. So this is what Maya principle is. And there is a lot of products actually that are uh, built nowadays. I'm talking about like all kinds of things, like movies, but also like even cell phones, uh, you know, devices in general, uh, games as well, that are built on Maya principle, which is like not more uh, novelty the 20% and 80% familiar, so that you as a person who's playing, um, you can feel familiar and understand what's going on, but in the same time have um, a lot of new things. Um, and, and the thing is, like, when you look at Cyberpunk, I think Cyberpunk was like, what, 40, 50, 60 maybe, depending on what you are, is a new thing, and, and another is a thing that, you, uh, that was familiar for you. And because of that, uh, or also, uh, and it also will be a bit different when you look at us as a studio, so what we have done before, let's say a shooter. Uh, you know, we've never done that before. Uh, a game that has, um, an, uh, you know, pr quite complex mechanics regarding handling the vehicles, you know. Another thing that we have never done, you know, different ways to build your character, you know, when it comes to the, the builds and making sure that you can do all the quests with no matter what kind of build you have, you know. Another, um, another thing, right? So for us as a studio, there was like, I think, much more new things than you are used to as a player. So. For us, it was probably like, I don't know, 50-50, maybe even 60-40 when it comes to new to old. While for you as a player, I think it was definitely more than 20% of new. 
but if it was much more than 20, I'm not sure, uh, actually. Because, like, there are games that add some similar elements, but not to that extent as in Cyberpunk. So, uh, it's, um, it's an interesting philosophical discussion, uh, I would say, uh, regarding this. Everything Star Wars follows is like 90-10. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, that is actually quite that is actually quite true, you know? They are, they are like, way too close to familiar and to Shabovi uh, for my... Uh, for my taste. Um. Okay then, um, my friends. Um. Uh, oh god. Uh, oh god. I mean, it's just uh, it's there is like so much. Uh, Jadunio one twelve. Jadunio asks uh, if it comes to this conflict in art, what do you think is more important? Emotion or the quality of the craft and logical solid story. Hmm. I mean, all of it is important. For me, it's the latter. For example, I connect emotionally much more to the Return of the Jedi because of the final duel between uh, Vader and Luke, but I acknowledge the Imperator is much better in craft. What do you think? I mean, Jadunio, you have touched an interesting point because, like, I think the logic of the um the logic of the of the game uh, of the game of the story you know is the important bit because when you feel that something is illogical this takes you out of the immersion and you stop believing the story therefore you're stuck doubting the story and we're doubting the story you're not believing in that so um because of that you as a uh, as an audience you will just not buy that. You wa you want like and by buy I mean like invest your emotions into that. You won't get invested in into that factor at all ever. You know, um, uh, Jadunio. So like I think the logic you know of the story and how it's put together you know that it all actually makes sense is like first and foremost like I think this is the most important factor um, to start with. But then when you have it all there, the the things that you said so is yeah, emotions, quality of the craft. Uh, all of those things actually can be there like those things are not contradictory right those things are they, those things can be um done together the only problem is it's just an uh, an effort you know it's just an effort for the studio you know that makes the, the games the studio that makes the movies it is always just a huge investment you know for your team to actually make sure that all of those elements are there but it's doable it's absolutely doable you know um Look at the, I don't know, look at the arcane, right? Or look at the edge runners. You can see that, yeah, the story, the, the sorry, the, the, the craft, uh, the logic can be there and the emotions can be there. It's all actually doable and achievable. It's just a lot of work. Um, uh, Pirate Mihai wrote, the absurd is also a sort of a good story. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, like depending, of course, what you what you what you what you are building, but you know, like there's actually a lot of stories that were built on like absurd absurd uh, notions and so on. So uh, absolutely, like all the all the movies for you know from Monty Python, you know, are built in that kind of way. Um, it's just simply the goal of the story is slightly different. Like it's supposed to be a pastiche, it's supposed to be a, a comedy. Uh, it's supposed to be also a critique in a way, so um, uh, the absurd is very often used uh, uh, in that tool. And you know, of course, the uh, uh, you know Monty Python crew like utilized that really well. You know. Uh, Pablo wrote Pavo, after completing Hellman's story, we receive relic plans and information uh, that we have to look for some technical person who will understand them. We never find such person, you know why. Well, I mean, because, uh, like, I think it, w it is introduced quite well in the story, uh, Pablo, that the, the problem is that the, um, the whole, um, you know, relic was something i would say well fairly new right like it was an attempt you know of arasaka to immortalize uh, some of their how to say it, execs you know saburo and others um and uh, i mean saburo himself and the, the 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 thing is like it is a completely new um technology uh in a way uh so as a as a player like as a in the world that's not something that you can ask every second uh, person um, uh, about. But, you know, I think the game... I'm not actually sure. Uh, like, I wanted to say that the game does a decent job of explaining that, but maybe it doesn't, and that's why you're asking. 
it's always yeah that's why i'm saying like it's always good to uh talk to you guys you know because then i can um uh understand you know um so much about the uh you know about your own perception you know um swords swords on says pavo conspiracy with three question uh, with three exclamation marks I think Cyberpunk with bugs was the greatest reveal game experience. Because imagine if you have some other old fucker dude in your head. Your reality will be fucked up uh, too somehow sometimes. Maybe that was the correct way to play the game and people just, just misunderstood. I mean, uh, Swords On, um, a very interesting um, interpretation, I would say. Um, very interesting attempt of interpretation, <laughs> I would say. Um... um uh, I, I still think that, you know, uh, the, the bugs should be fixed, but uh, uh, definitely, you know, bringing glitches to the next level, uh, so to say. Uh, we'll reach two hours without gameplay lol. I mean, Tyler, it's not that you guys have little questions, right? I, I just want to make sure that uh, all the, you know, questions from this week sort of have been answered and then I'll be moving on to playing the game very soon. Very soon. Uh, George wrote, there's about five minutes left until you start the game. Uh, that is quite uh, true, uh, my friend. Um, uh, oh, God. Um, uh, Traxor21 wrote, hey, Pavel, I, really, I recently finished Cyberpunk 2077, and I have to say it was one of the best experiences I ever had emotionally as a player, as well as uh, didactically as a game designer student. Oh, that's cool. I'm hoping that if the stars align in the future, I can end up meeting some of the CD cyberpunk designers in real life. Or even work in, uh, to the project. Hey, I mean, Traxor, don't fucking, you know, even uh, bother my friend and just, like, pick it as a goal and work for it. Like, my friend, of course you're going to do it. It's just a matter of time, nothing else. Like, you know who doesn't achieve success? Only people who fucking give up. Honestly. That is the only way not to achieve success. Seriously, like imagine if you as a person want to make like the best fucking lollipops in the world. Just an example. This is the only like to you need to make a lot of fucking different lollipops and try them and, you know, become really obsessed with the fucking lollipops, get all the knowledge, how the lollipops are made, what is the market, who likes the lollipops, who doesn't, why, you know, how you can improve them and, you know, romp up your game and, and really deliver the fucking fantastic lollipops. This is how you, this is how you do it. And you, be, you stay long enough in the lollipop business and then you become the best in that. That's the way it fucking works, you know? Seriously, like, there is... It's, there is so little mystery behind success, I think. Like, the only way you don't get, don't get success is like when you give up on the way, when you change and you decide, no, I want to work for something else, you know? And I'm going towards a completely different goals. Like, I, you know, I misunderstood. I actually learned on the way, you know, that I actually want something else. And this is important too, because you may decide, okay, I actually really don't want to do the lollipops. I also, I really wanted to go, go, go and just make candy. And then you realize, no, actually, I prefer making candy than lollipops. And you're like, yes, that is the thing. I had to go through the path of making lollipops to go to make the candy now. Or you just become go and become a lawyer. You know, there's, uh, you know, the, the changes of the careers can be very, very uh, sometimes drastic, I would say. But the only way not to have a, not to have a success is to fucking give up. So, tracks, 21. Um, tracks are 21. I'm waiting for you uh, into the project, my friend. Fucking few years, my friend, and we're seeing each other. Okay? Now, Gokan, 11 216. <laughs> uh, Sapphire wrote nothing wrong with a lawyer's life. Of course not. Of course not. Of course nothing's wrong uh, with a lawyer's life. Um, Gokan11216 wrote, Hi Pavo, hope you're doing good and happy. Uh, I'm doing okay. I, <laughs> I have a suggestion. Now that CDPR is moving 100% to Unreal Engine, please tell the team uh, if they are not aware. I think they are, and I think they are. some of them are present here. Um, 
of the shader, shader compilation stutters on PC, all the Unreal games in recent years have had that problem. And that stutter is so annoying that they honestly have not enjoyed an Unreal Engine uh, game since six years ago. Uh, to the project has always done 10 out of 10 PC games, not only graphically, but also polish wise. So please beg you, beg you to look out for it. Thank you so much, Gokan. Um, I mean, I'm quite sure uh, that the uh, uh, Unreal team is quite aware of that. And I'm quite sure that our uh, rendering team is quite aware of that, um, to be completely frank. Uh, but thank you for your comment, uh, my friend. Um, I hope we are going to meet here, you know, years from now, uh, after you know, bunch of things are out, and then we can talk, uh, you know, and then we can talk about this shader compilation stutter, um, uh, as you mentioned. Okay then, uh, my friends, because there is literally like bazillion uh, questions still, uh, and uh, you know I am still going to be I'm still going to be answering your questions, but it's time to play the game uh, a bit more. So I'm loading the game right now at the background. Uh, I almost uh, almost have it. Pavel, can we get you on a radio station? I mean Tyler, and what I would do there um, actually um, specifically. Because, uh, you know, um, uh, like last time I checked, I, I'm not too, um, how do you call it, um, uh, 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 great uh, when it comes to singing. I mean, well, you know, may maybe so some things I can sing, but uh, not, not too uh, well, uh, let's say. Uh, so, my friend, um, I'm not really sure what I could do uh, in that radio. You guys can hear the game already. Yes, because the game's there. Here we go. Let's go, my chums. I'm so glad that we are back. Um, it's always really awesome to play Cyberpunk. Now, we are going to... Mm, holy hell. Uh, yes, we were supposed to... Yes, we were supposed to do the side jobs here. Right, because... Uh, oh, God, this is the beat on the brat. I'm seriously level 49, and I'm still getting my ass handed to me. Uh, we need that legendary... Gorilla arms, my friends. Um, anyhow, let's go to this side job and let's see what it is. Uh, as always, I don't remember too well. Uh, oh, I'm actually quite close. That is nice. Uh, that is nice. Um, uh, Riki wrote, after, after having gone through my third playthrough, I've had something on my mind. As we, we end up becoming one of the strongest solos in Night City, yet visually I feel like I look quite underwhelming in terms of cyberware. Will we ever see an upgrade in terms of visual uh, cybernetics enhancements, whether it's for Netrunner builds or bruisers? A very good question, um, uh, Ricky. I mean, we are, I think, like our art team is very much aware uh, of that, like the current... Um, I would say the current way, you know, how you can upgrade yourself as a player is the way how our garment system uh, is working on uh, V. And even though this garment system is uh, really advanced, uh, you know, it doesn't allow for everything. And, you know, some of the uh, enhancements, uh, you know, uh, we could like theoretically talk about, uh, those are not doable also partially because of the systemic um, uh, solutions behind the garment system, you know. So that is some kind of an answer for your question. When it comes to like from on the side of the design uh, itself, uh, I do agree with you mostly. Like I would love to actually as a player really be able to, uh, you know, look more impressive, uh, you know, when it comes to the cyberware especially uh, and so on. So I, um, uh, I completely agree with you. The thing is like internally, I also uh, conversed about it with our art directors. Um, and people who are like connected to uh, with that topic or working on that uh, have been working on that aspect uh, and you know like they do agree as well you know there are always like uh, places where you as a as a dev where you need to stop Jesus this kid is interesting Wow very cool um, there are always like you know a, a places where you have to stop you know when you're like updating your t your your game and so on. And that was the place for us here, uh, you know, for Cyberpunk. Um, however, I, I wanted to make sure that you understand that I'm talking about what's like right now, today, uh, in the game. You know, who, who knows what the future brings. Um, Jor Carpenter is a national treasure, uh, some ghost dude wrote. Yeah, I've seen that John Carpenter really wanted to do, like, a, he said, uh, 
uh, Dead Space movie. Uh, sorry, write the music for Dead Space uh, movie. Uh, if I'm if I'm not wrong, so. Um, Sarduka wrote multiple cyber limbs, multiple weapons and cyber limbs, uh, parrot guns, chain hands. Absolutely. Like, I would definitely want to be looking like, um, you know, like a tarantula, you know, having like a six uh, or eight, actually, because I think spiders have eight pairs of, um, of legs. So, yes, absolutely. I would just love to... Uh, I would love to look like that. Oh, I think I know what it is. Do you guys recognize the quest? I think I know what it is. El Coyote, uh, Coyote El Cojo. Where are we with the plot, Kushix asks. Uh, Kushix, uh, so the situation looks like this. I am with the main jobs. I have now played safe only, uh, waiting. I've done... Mm -hmm. I've done most of the side jobs outside of Beat on the Brat yet. And outside of the... Uh, uh huh. Yes, this is the this is the best Isis one. So this will wait. The Highwayman, yes. Be Beast in me, full in the hill. So those are tarot costs, cards. Yes, the chases, and then the Psycho Killer from the Cyber Psychos. So those are the ones that we still have to do. Um, so that's this. That's the status. And when it, when you look at the map. Uh, on the map, we have, as you see, a bunch of quests and a bunch of gigs, and that would be it, my friend, you know? So we are actually we are actually quite, I would say, advanced when it comes to side content. When it comes to main story, we are in 30, 40% maybe? I think, like, I think 35, maybe 40%. Uh, percent. Uh, Revolver Ocelota asks, um, recently directors such as Edgar Wright and Mike Flanagan said they would never say anything negative about someone else's film because they know how hard this job is. Yes, I've seen actually this response. In response, a few devs said that they think a dev who criticizes other games in public is an asshole. I have to admit, Revolver, I fucking completely agree with that. Uh, I've seen Patrick Mills tweet about it. My friend, I completely agree. That's why I, I, I've been talking about it on the streams before. Um, what do you think? Shouldn't criticizing colleagues' works from a certain industry actually occur? Uh, because it should be left to the critics and viewers. After all, without criticism, things won't get any better. The thing is, like, I think what um, Edgar Wright was mainly because I didn't uh, see the post from Mike Flanagan, but I've seen uh, the post from uh, Edgar and uh, what he meant specifically was the um, uh, um, criticizing or over criticizing someone you know I think like I've seen a lot of devs you know speak about things you know they like they didn't like um, and I think this is still okay you know but it gets to the point when uh, you know especially like after the release of the games that have been troubled you know just let give you the few examples you know outside of cyberpunk of course you know there was a um, GTA trilogy situation um, we have the um, right now the situation with platinum games uh, there was a um, there was like few other cases you know with the game at the day one not being perfect you know and and some devs you really like sweating to do like really big patches you know before actually the game um, you know gets really criticized and I've seen devs that I wouldn't really I wouldn't expect them to do that and that was such a that was such a low move. You know to really to really criticize in a very how to say it um an uneducated way uh work of other devs um sitting in the wrong spot uh this this isn't a bar <laughs> it is but it's our bar get up let's take a walk oh, they are kicking out some dude jesus Hey, How do we hate in my bar? Hey, door biz here. Oh shit. So, uh, going back to your question, Revolver, like I, I really, I, I really out. honestly, you know I really honestly believe that, like, fair criticism is completely fine, right? Like, I think what Edgar was pri primarily referring to was the fact that uh, I think the music is a bit too loud. Um, what he was referring to primarily is the fact that um, the people are doing it in a really asshole way. You know, I've seen reactions after the cyberpunk release and even after patches and so on, when it was 
clearly visible that we as a team we are struggling we're actually really trying to um you know help out and and do uh, like you know provide players with the patches and we are committed to actually like work on the game even more and people were just fucking kicking us you know people were like basically kicking us when we were lying you know and i've seen a lot of deaths I've seen a lot of journalists actually do that. I've seen a lot of influencers do that. Like actually like people that I followed before and people I actually, how to say it, trusted in opinions. And they were doing such an like uneducated claims, you know, online that was really painful, you know? It was really painful to read because like I saw that like when I was talking to them in person at some points, you know, they were all nice and everything was fine. But then like publicly they, they spoken so badly about the game and us, you know, especially when people were criticizing like the studio and the devs, you know, or they were laughing or they, or they were saying that they are happy, you know, uh, the, the game is doing badly and so on. And it's just like, for me, I completely can't understand that, you know, that's why when, um, I saw what's happening with Rockstar actually, you know, with the situations with the leak, you know, I was trying to be a part of the, I, I was trying to help actually, like, that's why I tweeted that we should support them and not spread leaks, you know, um, and I was trying to bring awareness to the fact that people misunderstand what the hell they are seeing, you know, sure there were some people that were saying, oh yeah, this is actually nice, I'm actually excited, sure you are, but you are probably you are probably one of the more educated players who actually know what the hell they are looking at. There were so many comments when people completely didn't know what the hell they are looking at, you know? So like, that's why I like, I, I really want to support Rockstar and show like, this is how you should fucking act as a dev. Because you can be in a situation like this. I've been in a situation like this, right? We were hacked, you know, our shit got stolen, you know? People were dragging us through the mud, you know? Um, and I know how it is when other devs, especially prominent devs, come in and fucking kick you, you know, when you're lying. That's why I wanted to help. Anyway, uh, Revolver, I think really like fair criticism is completely justified and I think it's fine, you know, to do. But we are seeing like a lot of vitriol and toxicity, you know, and I completely can't accept this. Like this is... This is fucking ins this is this is so bad. Like you can later, you know, in years to come, you can work with people from other studios, you know? How would you feel, you know? How would you feel knowing that you're like actually like now working for a studio that you've been criticizing before or that you know some people who are members of that of that team now are working for you, right? Because people circulate in game dev a lot, right? And, and they switch and then you join the team, you know, would you join the team from which, you know, the devs were tweeting or speaking anywhere on Facebook, or on forums, on social media that they fucking hated what you have done, you know? Would you do that? You probably wouldn't, you know? Um, anyway, I, I think it actually speaks a lot, you know, about the character and the person, you know, who acts, you know, at the moment of the test, you know? The moment when actually it's easy and everything's going fine, it's it's always, you know, it's always great, you know, to smile and have a good character. But at the moment when the test comes and then, you know, you are in trouble and then other people like come in and fucking kick you when you're like lying, you know, when you're down. Um, and I never, I never want to be a part of that fucking group. I think this is really low and um, I have honestly, like this makes me lose respect for people when they are doing stuff like that anyway my friends sorry because this question was quite um important to answer properly that's why i stopped playing and i started i started answering um um why you you looking to get me because that's what's about to happen really ain't that four blind all i see is two gongs trying to rob a stumbling suit you heard what Pepe said. Take a fucking walk. June, fuck off. Or I implant my blade in your ribs. Dude. Dude, I have fucking 50 street cred. You're just getting fuck you out of here. fast enough with that blade? Really? The way I see it, be a smoking hole in your chest before your neurons even light up. But hey, nothing like a little experiment, right? Hey, right, come on, Pedro. That was it. Don't work out. Yo, fuck you! Carajo! Fucking punk! So what? 
What just happened? Landed in a little trouble. Cleaned up now. God, such damn, nice sorry. gonks. I think I've had a little too much. Yeah. Fuck, what a night. Why? Why'd you help me? Because I'm good, you know? This is, uh, you know... Because I know you got the scratch, because now we were in trouble, exactly. You would have caught a beaten. Worse. This fucking town, these people... Just here, minding my own business. If it weren't for you, I'd... Hey, here, Joseph, don't worry. In trouble. The rest, uh... Bartender got the rest. Oh, that's cool. Thanks, Joseph. That was such a nice. <laughs> okay, my chooms. So, time for a Raymond a Raymond Chandler evening. Are you are you are you ready for some Raymond Raymond Chandler evening? I really love this bar. Such well decorated place, you know, the neons and so on. Um, I love the composition in this game. And the light, you know, like the way how it softly actually blends, you know, from these greens here, to reds here, to violets here. This is, uh, like, our lightning artists and rendering team. So fucking good. Anyway, um... Hello, Mama Wellis. Uh, um, go up? Okay, okay. No worries, no worries. Uh, sorry, Chums, I wasn't. Uh, I, I will uh, take a look on the chat. What's going on? Machiavelli asks, "Is Phantom Liberty name inspired by me Metal Gear series?" No, it's not. Uh, there's two games called Phantom Pain and Sons of Liberty. I know, I know, I know. All Metal Gear games are spy and thriller games. So Machiavelli, of course, we we knew about that, right? Like we 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 felt about this connection, uh, but it's not really inspired in a way. But you know, of course, we discussed. Oh yeah, that you know, players may feel that it's kind of some kind of reference, but it's not really uh, any kind of res reference. However, of course, you know the fact that. Uh, the um, you can call I guess Metal Gears a, a spy and thriller games, so in a way it kinda it kinda may work, you know. Um, Camille Cesaro wrote, "You are very bad, Mr. Pavo." Oh, I'm bad. Oh, really? Like you? <laughs> Why do you think so? You know, maybe I killed too many people. Um. Uh, okay then, um... Greybeard Ask, are you ignoring me? My friend, I've never ignoring you, there is like hundred of people in the chat. Uh, well, uh, actually 900. Uh, Greybeard, um, I have posted my question several times, no worries my chum, I simply missed it. Uh, can you tell us anything about Cyberpunk? No coincidence. Um, it seems, uh, uh, I've seen it in another YouTube video that is as a novel, but uh, it's going to be released in 2023. Is it something that CDPR is putting out? Uh, Greybeard, so the answer is, this is a novel that was written by Rafał Kocik, um, Kocik, sorry, by Rafał Kocik. Rafał is a uh, fairly known, I think, a writer in Poland. Um, I have read in the past things from Rafał, but I don't remember the title right now. Um, and I remember like he was, he is a solid writer, um, I would say, um, but I uh, don't know anything more about the cyberpunk, no coincidence. As you can imagine, it's a book from a uh, cyberpunk universe um, and uh, our business team, uh, team, team, sorry, was working of course on a contract with, um, with Rafał here. So I really don't have any more information to share. What I can tell you, Greybeard, is that I'm actually looking forward to it um, and I'm going to read it for sure. I really what I'm really actually interested um, about the book uh, about the book um, same actually as I'm uh, in you know in uh, cyberpunk comic books uh, so like when when all the series like when all the issues are out you know for a given story I'm just buying it all out you know in a package and then reading it all out uh, I really enjoyed the um, uh, trauma team comic book so like I know that you know uh, we as a we as a studio you know we want to like make sure that we are like releasing different things from our brands, our IPs. Um, and here you have like just another example of that kind of a cooperation. Um, so I'm really, I'm very, yeah, I'm very curious, you know, about the book. Uh, I hope Gre Greybeard that it answers your question uh, the best. Um, I really don't have much more uh, to add uh, here. 
Shimon wrote Ave, uh, Rafał Kosik Ave to the project. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Um, okay, uh, my friends, let me play the game. How do you feel? I lost my son. How am I supposed to feel? I, I'm sorry, V. I shouldn't have. I, it's just. When I see him that day, in that deep, all covered in blood, you know what I wanted to say to him. Jesus. Te metiste en una gran problema, Jackie Wells. As if he was 14 years old again. No. Just coming home from a fight with the other kids. It's so heartbreaking for the parents to... It's like... My brain was trying to protect... To bury their own child, you know. now okay okay mama wellness i understand jesus such a sad moment uh okay did you, did you talk to misty ever talk to misty in the end i did like you said i invited her over for dinner oh she did and she's so skinny <laughs> what if that no she she's like typical typical no mama She's so skinny. She's a little bit uh, eccentrica. Said my home sits on a natural energy source. Hmm. But I think I know why, Jack. He's a nice girl. We exchange numbers. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool, actually, you know, um, that I was able to, you know, classic Latino mom, uh, Woodin wrote. It's so nice, actually, that I was, you know, able to bring them together a bit. You know, Guadalupe hadn't noticed this line. I think because I think you need to like talk to her after the um, uh, burial of Jackie and after talking to Misty, you know, here. Um, so that's the reason. Um, okay, then, uh, my friends, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm moving. <laughs> forward with playing uh key money 38000 wrote on my second playthrough i got busy and missed all this i mean mama wellness forgave me uh but feels bad man yeah i can imagine like that's the thing like in uh i was talking about it in the past you know when we played the game that in cyberpunk is like you as a player really need to like get into the world and explore and find things you know to see the you know the results of your actions um and everything that happened and it's it's quite easy, you know, to miss some of those, uh, definitely. Anything interesting happening in the area? Interesting. Around here. <laughs> Not one single thing. That's why the kids, they join gangs. No jobs. No future. Where they end up? Behind bars. Oh, Jesus. This neighborhood died a long time ago. Damn it. I'll have a drink. Have a drink. Oh, I can. She's actually. Oh, I can. I can actually. Okay. Okay. I can actually open the uh, shop here. But a uh, very interesting person. Hello, friend. A very interesting. Um, I don't know how would you even call that kind of thing. Uh, hat. Um, very stylish, very stylish, very stylish. You blind? No, I'm not blind. Um, I just bumped it. You sorry? NPC at the bar with the bun, like this one? Oh yes, yeah, this one. Yamane Hisao, you like him? Anyway, circling him like sharks on the scent of fresh corpo blood. Let's proceed. Could have ended badly if you hadn't stepped in, V. Yeah, well, not all heroes wear capes. How about we drink to you then? On the house. <laughs> sure. Let's let's drink with Pepe. How you guys feel about it? Won't say no to a free drink. To good fortune and prosperity. Long day. Could say that again. I'm on a double. No break. Working overtime to make an extra buck? Nah, just don't want to go home. 
Oh shit. Ten years married, you know? Ten years and suddenly I'm not good enough. No, she has to go get some side action. Oh shit. Anyhow, since you brought up money, you wouldn't be looking for a gig, would you be? Pay solid. Damn, are we are we help I'll be are we helping Pepe? Yeah. <laughs> Everything interesting is sus for FF06B5. Confused? So. No, I'm not confused, Pepe. I'm just looking at the chat. I mean, the chat sometimes makes me confused, though. Uh, Pavel, have you played Outer Worlds? Oh, no, my friend, I didn't yet. I didn't yet, I'm sorry. Um, I I'm sorry. Hades asks, you talk about how important emotions are you in stories you tell. Confused. What about imagination, games, books, or even TV shows work better? Um, in this field than movies. It seems uh, to me that at some point a lot of effort uh, is put into this, isn't it? Um, or is it the flip side of a well-told story and a well-done overall game narrative, including outside of the quests? Hmm. Well, I mean, um, when it comes to the... the well, we, we work with the visual arts, right? Confused. Like, the, you know, the games, movies, you know, or comic books. Everything is somehow, you know, connected to the... Uh, connected to the, the art, you know, and how it looks like in visual art. So, like, normally the, the, the way we work it, uh, work it out is, like, you're always trying to create, like, the world in a way that it looks like and feels as real as possible. But leave, you know, a lot of space for the player to fill up the gaps, you know, with their imagination and um, fill up the things and figure out things that are actually outside of the boundaries, let's say, of the narrative that you're making, you know? Uh, that's why what you're trying to do, you're trying to, like, you know, prepare this world and create it in a way that you as a player, when you're, like, in it, you know, you can imagine all of those additional stories or of the additional things that can actually happen, you know, let's say in Cyberpunk or, or in The Witcher uh, stories. That's why it's so important, you know, to get those things right. So that you can really, like... Um, you, you can really, like, activate players' imagination, you, you know? confused. That's okay, Pippa. Run me through it. It's about my wife, right? Name's Cynthia. She's cheating. I'm sure of it. Only question is, who will? Oh, shit. I could let it eat away at me. Or I could get someone like you. Ain't no more than an evening's work. Okay. Where do I find your wife? How do you know she's cheating? Why do you want to know? Okay, how do you know? Sure she's cheating on you? Damn. Let's start with the fact that she always stays late after work. I know she's lying. Called her office one night. She wasn't even there. No. Besides that, well, we got a kid together, right? Doesn't even look like me. Different hair, different eyes, all of it. Oh, shit. It used to be easy to check these things. But with today's tech, there is a way around every test now. Oh, shit. Damn. Poor, my poor man, Pepe. Damn. Hmm. You seem confused. Uh, I am a bit. Where do I find your wife? Gonna have to keep tabs on your wife. Follow her around town. Where'd she be now? She works nearby. I'll give you the address. Knowing her, she'll be on a smoke break. Smokes like a goddamn tire fire. Like half the city. <laughs> Jesus. Wait. But today, she was wearing a pink jacket. And, uh. Hmm. She had a blue purse, I think. Colorful. Okay. Always pink jacket, like blue purse. dressing up. Get a woman something nice for her birthday, anniversary. Okay. And what do you get in return? Okay, why do you want to know? Why do you want to know who she's with? What's the point? What's the point? What kind of gone question is that? Simple one. <laughs> Answer it. I want to look him in the eyes. Ask him how it feels fucking some other guy's wife. Breaking up a happy marriage. Jesus Christ. Okay, sure I'm in. Not for me. Okay, sure, I'm in. Okay. Let's do I it. Let's do some fucking Raymond Chandler work. Thanks, Pepe. God damn it, my friend. Okay. Go to area where Pepe's wife works during the day. Okay, my chums, you guys ready? We need to uh, help my chum, Pepe. Who created this quest? Mateusz Albrechtinski. Uh, quest designer uh, in my team. Mateusz uh, right now is already working for 
Sounds like something out of a pulpy noir thrill. Blizzard team right now. Pepe was used to listening to his customers' complaints, but now it was he who needed to get something off his chest. <laughs> it was the same old story. An unfaithful <laughs> wife in a city where everything was uncertain. Thanks, Jody. I'm trying to focus. <laughs> okay, Jolly, Jolly's narration is always fucking the best part. Uh, anyway, okay, my dears, um, it's kind of close, so uh, I guess we need to switch the time during the day and go there. I believe so. Uh, it's actually pretty, pretty funny. H um, A A D H D Chief. Hey, Pavo, uh, could you tell us if uh, the area for the expansion will be made larger on the map uh, than currently is? My friend, I can't talk about any future content, you know that. You know that, my chum. Like, I can't talk about any future content here. Like, you know, we are trying to make the best fucking thing for you, okay? Um, really, like, the team is really working hard to make sure we can deliver you something with the quality and you can have fun and we can be proud, you know? That's the idea. Um, I, I, you know, um, let's just wait and see. You know, I think really that's the best we can do, uh, my friend. Sorry, HDHD, um, ADHD fr uh, chief, uh, that I can't answer it uh, right now. Um, okay then. Um, mm, sure, he's a he's a lover of the old classic noir movies. This quest is a whole reference. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, in a way you can say that. Um, okay. Mm. I arrived on the scene looking for the woman in the pink jacket, the woman with a sordid past. Stop right there. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> Thanks, Jody. You are uh, you are you're a fantastic help. Uh, seriously, every time when he's like acting like that, I'm like, okay, Johnny. Um, Okay, uh, so we are here. Um, scan and identify uh, Pepe's wife, but shouldn't we like go into? Shouldn't be during day. Okay, she said pink. Hmm. Ah, uh, so so my chums, pink jacket, blue purse. I've seen someone in pink jacket there. Is that her? Oh, that is her. It was her, the lady in pink, breaker of hearts, framed by a halo of cigarette smoke. I followed her. Dreaming of the day the narrator put a fucking plug in it. <laughs> okay, let's Got just do that. Close. Almost scared the dame off. Better be careful. I know, I know. Follow Pepe's wife from a safe distance. Okay. RP walk. Yeah, exactly. Let's go. Got too close. Again. Something just drew me to her. Like one magnet to another. Well, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Johnny is doing this like typical Raymond Chandler's narration. It's like, yeah. Uh, by the way, yeah, yeah, I, I am a uranium bullet. I, I did press uh, G. I, I just, I forgot around. that I could. Something weighed on her. Maybe it was my gaze. Keep this up. I'm gonna fucking puke. Narrate that. <laughs> okay, Johnny. We need to be uh, stay, stay far away. You will spook her if you sneak. Okay, I'm not going to sneak. No problem. Male V voice is funnier here. Uh, oh, that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some differences, yeah, between male and female. You know, sometimes like certain situations just work better for the woman for a given actor. A bum, gives him a wide berth. Doesn't want her clothes dirty. Her conscience is already dirty enough. Oh, seriously. What did I ever do to you? <laughs> this is such a fucking awesome interaction. I love this shit. Best Keanu performance. Uh, yeah, I mean, Keanu's fucking amazing as Johnny. I'm glad you guys, you guys really like... Uh, wait, she's crossing on red? What is going on? Uh, 
Uh, I think I need to move. Holy shit. Okay. Follow Pepe's wife into the building. The disappeared into the guts of a building ready to collapse. The air hung heavy with smog and betrayal. <sighs> Maybe it's a good thing I'm dying. <laughs> That is a uh, very interesting. That is very interesting. Uh, a comment from V. Maybe it's good. I'm dying. <laughs> okay. Okay, my chum save the game. You know the other side of the building. I will scan it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm invested in the story, Kabil. Fine. Be careful! You'll tear his shirt! Well, well, well. Okay. Holy shit, what is happening there? Hey, you! What are you doing here? Fuck, Cynthia. Told you to make sure nobody followed you. Shady Ripper Dog? God damn it! What is going on? Doesn't matter, I've seen enough. I mean, I've seen not much. Your husband sent me. Oh yeah, that's like the first line I want to say, you know. Uh, to just arrive at the scene and be like, your husband sent me. Okay. Husband sent me. Suspected something. What? See, he was right. Wait. No! It's it's not like that. I, I can explain. Okay. Okay, Cynthia, fucking tell me. Should be talking to your partner, not some random merc? Go on, let's hear it. Okay, Go let's on, do it. Let's hear it. Okay, for, for one thing, he's not my input. He's my ripper. A specialist in plastic surgery. Specialist? In this dump? Look, I know. I I had this little accident a few years ago. The victim, uh, well, the patient's family still can't let it go. That's why I'm forced to work here. Hold on a sec. What about your kid? Here's the thing. I... Oh... I didn't used to look like this. I had a total body sculpt. Skin, hair, eyes, everything. Except, well, you can't fool your genes. Oh, That's shit. That's why our son looks different than Pepe imagined. It's not because he's not the father. Just that I... I don't look anything like the old me. Damn. Um... Uh, Suzahoria92, hello, nice to have you. God damn it. I could, like, I could also uh, get used to some sculpting, you know? That would be, um, uh, that would be cool. That would be cool, you know? Um, hmm. That changes things. Hmm. Well, uh, plot's thicker than I imagined, for sure. I'm glad you listened. Saw it from my point of view. I know I should have told Pepe about all this, but there was never a good time. And, and now that I'm expecting again, it, oh, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't planned. Oh, so she's Please, pregnant. Uh, tell him, tell him that. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what to tell him myself. That, that I'm really sorry. Life's an absurdist drama, okay? Just... Just go. Hit the nail on the head with that last point. I mean... I, I'm... I'm not sure if I'm completely believing here because like, okay, so she arrived here to do what? Like, body sculpt and, and so on and uh... She's actually not really betraying him. Okay, I get it. Um, yes, yeah, still is kind of sus. Exactly. It's like, it's like still fucking weird. Okay, chemicals. Uh, let me actually check the place. If there's any, anything I can actually use. Um, hmm. Okay. Here. What the heck? <laughs> this arm was moving. For a moment he has a lot of spare arms hey chum okay you don't want to talk to me that's fine now uh, talking about delicious meals by the way my friend um anyway 
Um, you know. Yes. What's on the horror's diary? Very interesting place to put it, by the way. Very interesting. Yeah, we, we read already the Watson's Horror Diary. Uh, very interesting place to leave it. Mmm. Das Computer. Was is das? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wunderbar. Mmm, genau. Pregnant by who? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's interesting. That German thank you coming, um, uh, you know, uh, d definitely, you know, I turned into my, um, um, you know, uh, t turned my examining implant. Anyway, uh, my chums, um... Why do you think that some players prefer Witcher 3 to Cyberpunk, aside from the launch of Cyberpunk? Well, I think, like, simply just uh, f for some people, like, uh, uh, first, first person versus third person storytelling is a big deal. Um, that's one thing. Second thing is, I think this, uh, a lot of players just may prefer simply, like, uh, dark fantasy rather than um, a more of a cyberpunk setting, more futuristic settings. So, like, the second thing. Third thing is like playing as a your own defined character as Geralt, you know, who is a great character, is also something that is um, um, will be uh, appealing for some players. So I think it's a combination of all of those factors, you know. Um, but you said that uh, some players prefer Witcher 3 over Cyberpunk, and I think it's also like the other way around as well, you know, uh, quite often, uh, because when you when you look at the sales of the game, you know, if, if the sales are te telling for anything, you know, um, Cyberpunk's over 20 million uh, already, and Witcher, it took Witcher like four years, I think, and um, uh, the first uh, was that the... It, it took Witcher like some patches, it took Witcher two expansion packs uh, to even get to that point, you know. So, um, uh, I think like b basically just both games are quite different, you know. And, and I think it's fine, you know, there's a lot of audience that overlaps. But there are some people that played Witcher and never touched Cyberpunk another way around, actually, you know. Um, and I actually kind of feel it's gonna be like this, you know, um, you know, more games we release. Uh, how to say it more more cases there's gonna be that like you know some players will be like no I really like this IP I don't like this IP or that IP is not for me that's not what I what I enjoy so uh, I can totally uh, see it happening you know uh, top two games uh, on my list Mr. Snail wrote uh, thank you so much Mr. Snail or um, yes Mr. Snail I think um, people are really used to playing fantasy medieval games, Kirkov, uh, Kalashnikov wrote. Uh, uh, it's fair point, you know, that's fair point. Like, Cyberpunk was, uh, like, Cyberpunk basically single-handedly, uh, you know, um, revived completely dead genre, which was Cyberpunk, you know? Like, after we now, Cyberpunk and so on, and started marketing it, um, like you 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 had you know like some of those you know cyberpunk movies suddenly pop up you know there was a gold goes in the shell there was blade runner there was um a modified carbon on the netflix um there was an upgrade um you know so uh there was like three or four cyberpunk games already so it's like sometimes it's enough when you have like a big studio as us who steps in into the genre that is kind of dead and sort of like recreate it and revive it to actually revitalize the interest in that but players are not really used to even stray i think is a cyberpunk game really like people are not really used to playing cyberpunk games as much as they are used to playing medieval games uh, it will just take more more years to uh, to happen, uh, but still, it's it's definitely it's definitely happening uh, because you can observe it in the in the in our culture when you just look at the movies games um, that are released. It's ton of it. Yeah, new My Matrix movie. Exactly, I completely forgot about this one. Uh, Pavel, are you waiting for Gotham Knights? Krushvitz asks. Not really, uh, Krushvitz. To be honest, I played all the former Batman games. Um, I think Rocksteady is doing the Suicide Squad now, right? Uh, aren't they? Um, because the, uh, the the Gotham Knights are done by some other team. Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I haven't been too excited about the game. Um, I'll for sure like check out like the, some you know some YouTube recordings and so on to see it. Maybe I'm gonna get it to just like play a bit uh, and just basically see a bit of the game. But I'm not like really looking forward to it um like i loved batman that was very nice uh rocksteady did a great job there um 
uh, and I like honestly their version of the Gotham City is uh, was incredible uh, honestly flying around there as Batman you know uh, on that um, uh, glide uh, was very fun um, in the game um, okay then uh, my chums let's keep playing so we have clients Mark O'Connell skin replacement including fingerprints eyes gene cloaking Jesus Liz Bryan change in face shape cheekbones chin nose neon her implant Linda Nugent eye color change spine stretching and strengthening skin dyeing okay Paul Kasitsky Paul Kasitsky full uh, phenotype change from Caucasian to African American vocal cords toned down interesting Cynthia's all not on the list right like yeah cruise fits exactly very fucking strange right What's setting harder be uh, Bex uh, 670 asks. I mean, my friend, way too early to talk about Hadar. Um, way too early. Way too early. Okay? Way too early. <laughs> when we'll be ready, we'll talk about it for sure. Okay. Table of contents. Introduction, history of plastic cybernetics. Okay. Ethics and praxis. Uh, list of available implants 2060, 76, 77. Potential complications. Contradictions. Shouldn't that be? I, I don't know what the contradictions are. Contradictions. Um, conclusions, acknowledgments, and biography. Uh, hello, Cement Bot, three hundred twenty-one. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Uh, indications. Oh, DJ Gnu, that's indications. Wow, that's fucking insane. Like I didn't know that word. Thank you, my friend. Uh, let's go to here. Mm, nothing really. Is there anything really suspicious here? Nothing really that I see. Hmm. So she is not on a fucking list. This is so sis. This whole fucking situation. This is so suspicious. Chooms. Seriously. Hmm. Okay. Hey, cause you're looking, I'm at home. Couldn't focus on shit. Standing and wiping glasses like a fucking robot. If something comes up, call me. Okay, 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 Pepe, okay. It's actually it's actually cool that, you know, the um um uh, that I'm not actually asked to like go to the same location, but actually it's done in a way that, you know, like to to make sure that we will actually deliver uh, the player basically different ways of interacting with the character. Oh god, I have so many messages, but those are all fixers, so that's fine. Uh, let's call him. Let's call him, Chooms. Check the other side and look up. Okay, let me let me check the other side and look up. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to be driven over here. Okay, let us actually see what is here from the interesting things. Hmm, the fuck? Lol. Hello, my chum. Uh, stamina booster? Gag. Okay. That is uh, some, uh, some interesting... Yeah, Kabila, I found it. That is some interesting uh, setup. So we have Karka conversation with Gustavo Berges and Lupe Dolores. Easier in the day, I think you can see blood. Okay. So let's see. Gustavo Berger and Lupe Dolores is talking. Okay. I don't make me back, baby. You know we want me. Ah! More than you know! But we gotta wait or a Joaquin will catch us! Baby, please. I'll... Chump like chicken for breakfast, and I'm craving my dinner, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh my hero! Uh, okay, fine. Um, but but back entrance from the fire escape, I'll be all alone and waiting. 
Sounds like I'm uh, coming in the back then. Twice. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Gustav, stop it. <laughs> uh, I think you're the only man I ever loved, you know? That doesn't surprise me. Now get your body ready to spend the day with me and Mr. Stud. And when Jaquin returns, you tell him, he's out and I'm in. Then we can be together forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, I, I think Jaquin showed up, didn't he? Didn't he? Yeah, inside the actor studio with Pao Sasko. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, definitely. Wow. I'm curious, I'm curious how's Dolores, but, uh, yeah, that was actually, <laughs> that was actually such a funny detail. Right, oh, Jesus Christ, so he was, like, fucking dumped here. <laughs> yes, uh, well, um, anyway, um, I hope Dolores is doing, doing okay, you know, uh, I hope she's doing okay. Eleven out of ten, Magda. Oh, thank you, Magda, so much. You know, uh, doing the voice acting for you guys is um, definitely uh, is one of the funnier things to do. Okay, let's call Pepe. Job's done. Followed your wife. Went into some rundown pad. Man was waiting for her inside. I knew it. What else? Knew it, huh? Didn't know a thing. Didn't cheat on you. At least not in the way you think. Huh? What way then? Okay, Chooms. She was seeing a ripper. I'm done with this. She will tell you herself. Hmm. Yeah, she's seen a ripper. Second option. Seeing a ripper. Second dialogue option. Hmm. So you're saying I'm done with this? Because that's the that's the thing. It's just like, like I'm not fully believing this like Ripper story, you know? Uh, Krushvitz don't listen to Kamil. Yeah, I'm not fully. I'm not paid paid job. Tell your client findings. Yeah, well, number number three in Seville. Okay, what's the fucking number three actually? Uh, okay. Huh. Okay, Chums. Um, okay, fuck. Uh, let, 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 let her tell him. I'm not getting dragged further into this. She'll tell you herself. Did my job. Now your turn. Waiting on that scratch. You know, I thought I'd be more than just one of your regular clients, but I guess I was wrong. Damn it. See around, V. Uh. Silence fell like a wet blanket over the city, <laughs> muffling its cries. Time to rest, I thought. Time to drink. See, that's more like it. Finally making some sense. Thanks. Okay, okay, I, I guess we're gonna... <laughs> yeah, Jody's the best, you know. Best possible choice. Ugh. Yeah, I was like... Load the game? No, but why, why should I... Why should I load the game? Why should I load the game? Yeah, exactly, we will... We will, uh, you know, wait, wait for the game to, you know, um, to develop. We'll see basically what happens. Yes, okay, the body. Going for 20, almost, trying to. Okay, perks, uh, my chooms, annihilation, street brawler. Jesus Christ, okay, are we getting any of that? Hmm, okay. What could me, what could still help me out uh, in combat and also be useful when we are doing the trying to fucking beat that rhino on the uh, beat on the brat chooms this is um passive reduces fall damage okay that's not me allows schist a pistol to recover body that's not needed health regenerates faster as you move okay maybe that one pavo balboa time uh you can do it easily with gorilla arms i mean pedro lopez so i do have gorilla arms i just play in very hard like, I am being one-shot. So, like, I am being one-shot. What build are you doing? I mean, I am doing the... I am doing the kind of, like, all-over-the-place build, but uh, I can show you, my friend. 
<laughs> Basically, so I have um, 20 reflexes and technical ability. I specialized mostly in rifles and handguns. Rifles and handguns basically for damage and then uh, I have done the technical ability, you know uh, uh, Crafting up as much as I could so that I could basically upgrade all my guns and now I'm trying to upgrade all my body to get more um You know uh, sustainability which I kind of got already with most of them Increases armor by 10%. Oh, I like that. That is sexy um uh, so I have done most of the athletics already that I could actually pick, you know, to give me more health. So the only thing I'm just worried about is like how to fucking to handle the, the pit on the brat so I can win there. I will get this one. Yeah, uh, so I can, so I can actually, you know, win the beat on the brat because that shit is difficult. Uh, on very hard, uh, or, uh, on very hard, this is really like, oof. It's a strain on my brain. The, uh, okay, so this is the this is the um, Claire's beast in me. That's okay. Uh, so let me actually. What the hell else we have here? We have like cleaned that map so fucking well at this point. Okay, let's go to this. Let's go to these gigs um, because we have three more missing. Uh, okay, there are three. This one. Oh, because maybe this is the new gig, and then there's also Cyber Psycho. Uh, let us check it out. Uh, and I will, uh, you know what, let's go and um, check the vehicles. Okay, guys, uh, are you feeling like buying some new car, maybe? Maybe we can actually get some new fucking car. Because I have a long time not... Um, hmm, do I have... Yes, okay. Because I didn't actually, uh, I didn't actually buy a car for a long time and I have 107,000 eddies as of now. So maybe we can actually check some car. Um, uh, Uranium Bullet, do you feel like the radio in game could have benefited from the talk shows? Hoping that more is added in Phantom Liberty. I mean, the, the thing is like, we do have some talk shows, right? Like the problem is also like a bit that, like I didn't hear like players enjoying it too much. Like I didn't hear like, for instance, did you guys listen to Mike speak about all the conspiracy theories in, in the radios and so on? Like. Um, I barely see people commenting on that or like saying that they like or enjoy listening to the radio and so on. Um, I think it's just so much in the background in the game um, that you as a player, you just kind of don't feel too much of an incentive to really play it. Sorry, to really like listen to it. Like I think a lot of players may just believe that in the game you have only like some radios with music and that's it while in fact like we have put like lots of work into news that are actually changing depending on who we have done in the story you know not always of course but some of them right some of the gigs trigger that as well uh but that's something that players don't really see much because the visibility of that isn't really that high you know um so that's the thing. But anyway, uh, so the question, do you like the radios? Did you uh, listen to them, like, actually speak really into the news? Because I have a feeling that so little people did, you know? Um, I, uh, IGN TV. <laughs> Interesting. So IGN TV asks, Hey, Pavo, I don't know if you can answer this, but I was wondering if the tarot cards reading in the end credits have a significance or are they there for funsies? Of course it has a significance, uh, my friend, but the interpretation is up to you. Interp interpretation is up to you. That's as much as I can, um, I can say, you know? Yes, you do. Okay, okay. Uh... It's flavor that can't be ignored. Um, okay, I mean, well, just because it's a flavor, it, it unfortunately, you know, it, it un unfortunately can be ignored. Guys, uh, what vehicle are you actually in the mood for? You know, like what vehicle could we get? A quartz? Ooh, there is the. Oh, that's the bandit. Maybe you can get the bandit. Sixty-nine. <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay, maybe you can get the bandit. Fucking expensive. Jesus Christ. Sixty-nine thousand. Fucking hell. I need to give them, like, skin from my own back. Brandon Apollo. Okay, that's cool. Villefort Alvarado. Chevalion Trax. Cortez. Well, there's Caliburn, but we have the we have the Merkman's car. Columbus. Quadra Avenger. Well, I mean, I, I have two Quadras already. Herrera Outlaw. Maybe Herrera? 
Jesus, that Herrera's fucking expensive. 92,000? This is like, what is going on? Erundite? Oh, Erundite is 155? Uh, it, it, it's just like, I am feeling like hot. Uh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ark Nazare, Yaiba Kusanagi. Okay, those are like quite expensive too. Thornton Galena. Can I like focus on the second one? Oh, there's the Mizutani Shion 57. Okay, I like this one. So I, should, I, will, I feel, I'm feeling like Outlaw, uh, probably, like the most. So like going like Herrera Outlaw, my chums, I think this will be... Um, <laughs> Thornton Colby Little Mule? No, 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 no. Uh, the Shion, I mean, uh, Shion maybe can be next. Uh, let's try that. Let's save money for Shion um, so that we can we can get it. Where are you, my car? Hello? Where the heck did it drive? It's like somewhere... What? It's like 100 meters, but where? Oh, Mr. Police Officers. Uh, oh, here you are. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's the new one that we got at some point last time. No, we didn't get it last time. Sorry, I'm telling you guys bullshit. We have uh, had. Um, yes, okay. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going. I'm going there. Cool. Um, we have. Uh, uh, I started using this one because I never. Jesus Christ. Dress to kill quest. I've never uh, tried this one before, so that's why we are trying this one. Uh, but I'm curious about this outlaw. I actually didn't drive it much of it, you know. Not a little Mew, but that, that will do. Uh, <laughs> sure, like, this one, this one is also pretty crappy, you know? Like, my Mai is, like, the, one of those most, like, charming ones, you know? I should go to the side, like, here, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ. The steering of this car is not the best. It drives well. Acceleration in great, but an excellent around car. Okay, okay. That's cool. Glad to hear it. Pavel, the Supron F3S, oh sorry, SF3, is the most cyberpunk of the cars, and I will fight anyone who disagrees. Okay, Mage Milk. Okay, Mage Milk. Um, let it be your way, my friend. Let it be your way. We don't want to fight you. Corpo, Corpo Plaza, sure. Okay. Fucking parked it, like... Perfection. Okay. Damn. What the fuck? Oh, that was like one of those car... One of these like explosive cars and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it like... You can see like the light under the car and then it fucking blows up. I, I just don't know where it exploded. Like I think somewhere in the alley next to us. Jesus. Let's go! Woohoo! Okay, Chooms. This is quite interesting, I have to say. I love the... So, like, one of the things, like, did you guys uh, pay attention? I mean, I, I hope you did. Like, you probably did. Like, when you get into the car, you can see actually, um... Um... <laughs> Can't afford rent. You live in your outlaw now, uh, Captain Captain Salty. Uh, thanks, Captain. Um, probably, like I, I love the moments. You know when the UI starts in the cars. Like, look at it. You know when it like turns on and so on. And there are some that have it more more elaborate and so on. But the fact that each each car has it like a unique U UI depending on the. Uh, brand, so fucking cool. This is pretty fucking cool. Damn, I love this outlaw. That interesting music. I've never heard this before. Um, okay, then uh, let's jump then to um, jobs mm, and let's go because we have the car. Let's go to gigs, my chums. Um, 
and we'll see how it goes. Oh, and it has a glass ceiling. That is such a cool fucking detail. I didn't realize that. That is awesome. Okay. Hey, stop bumping in my car. Okay, guys, at uh, the edge, the uh, the ver uh, the verge. Uh, time to switch to uh, time to switch the principales. Pavo drive. <laughs> stop it! Stop it! I, I, you know, look at this. What the fuck happened with this car? People are reckless in this city, by the way. Oh, my chums. Who is the writer who worked on the quests in Cyberpunk? I worked mostly with Tomek Marhevka, who wrote the pickup um, quest, the dialogues for it, while uh, all the side quests that I worked on for Cyberpunk, um, uh, so the storyline of Johnny, basically, Johnny's, uh, Johnny's quest, um, uh, Kerry Urodine's storyline, that was done by uh, Ola Motika. Uh, she's our senior writer, uh, was a senior writer, is a lead writer now. So, yes, uh, Ola's, uh, uh, Ola Motika is an amazing writer. She's with us since, like, Witcher 3, so an uh, uh, experienced person at this point. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sin Stress, for this sub, my friend. Uh, on SSCs, the HDA, uh, HDD mode on and off, uh, off, I think, you know, because HDD mode is for basically slower drives, you know, it's to make sure that, you know, everything can be loaded properly for you when um, you have the game installed in the slow drive. Um, if you have the SSD, just have that off, you know, it will perform better. Uh, Pavel, wait two days to get iconic VTech for free. You already did the quest. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. I love the I love the principal station. Latino music so good. Time to park my car. Fuck yes, I love the way. Let's talk. Another of God's wayward daughters is long due for judgment. I need someone who can hasten her journey to stand before the Lord. <laughs> okay, Padre, attached. I like that. Details attached. Thank you. Um, would you know? Would you know why my 3090 is struggling with Cyberpunk after 1.6? That is interesting, Sinstress. Do you maybe have uh, maybe there's there maybe that's some issue with some of your drivers and so on? Because I didn't hear any problem, anything uh, you know, people having problems on 3090s. Um, Sinstress, like what I would advise you to do is to um, like, of course, you know, reinstall the drivers, um, the advised drivers that are for the uh, for uh, from Nvidia. So not the last one because the last one, unfortunately, has some issues. But the one, the previous one, you can check it in our customer support page. But you can also simply message the customer support and tell them they react really quickly. They should be able to figure it out because, like, your your specs are amazing. Fucking 3090 i9, uh, absolutely, the game should be flawless on this. Like, I'm playing in 2080 right now, right? Like on the stream here and. Um, and, and this is working totally well, you know, I have everything on Ultra, including REX, with like psycho textures and, and the reflections, so, um, like on your fucking specs, it should be flying, my friend, so, uh, please message the customer support, I assume it's something with the specific setup of your, um, of your PC, you know, probably it will end up with you just reinstalling the, um, the drivers, maybe backing out, maybe you have the wrong, uh, version of the drivers, um, I'm not really sure, you know, from the description, but it should be told, it should be really working well, you know. Um, I am aware that some time ago, like a long time ago, we had issues on that cards, uh, but that should be totally, totally fine nowadays. Um, so yes, please message customer support, my friend, with that. Uh, uh, they are like wonderful people and they really, really quick, uh, in most cases, with like answering. So there is real water, yes, there is real water. Okay, get inside Tacker's building, my chums. Um, Let's go. Um, so, actually, because I was speaking, I didn't fully fucking grasp 
what our what our job is. Um, so let me read it. Eye for an eye, apparently. Gun for hire, Tucker Albach. A girl died a while back in the Glen. Her name was Rusita. I knew her. 17 years old, picture-perfect smile. Got hit by a car while she was crossing the road. I saw the CCTV. Almost tore her legs off clean. Jesus. What the fucking car he was driving. If she'd gotten up the emergency room sooner, she might have lived. Who knows? But it was middle of the night, empty street. Driver fled the scene. Soon enough, the NCPD found out our culprit. Ladies named Tucker Albach, vice managing director or something, at Kiroshi. Oh, shit. Her insurance covered vehicular manslaughter. So as far as the NCPD is concerned, she's off the hook. Oh, seriously, this world is so fucking rough. Only punishment she got is her insurance raising her premium. Hardly a slap on the wrist. Over my bed, dead body. This isn't what justice is supposed to look like. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, wound for a wound. Rosita wants Tucker gone, and you're gonna pull the trigger. I'm ready for a fucking job, my friends. This is literally like stealth mission that I'm born for. Let's check our let's check our um, devices, my friends, because like oh shit. Um, I think because we had few things so of course, you know, I'm comrades hammer stays. I think we need to um, We need to drop our overwatch here great and then here hmm Should I go into hypercritical? Uh, I think I prefer overwatch to be honest. Let's just use this one um, and have some kind something more punchy uh, today as well to experiment with different guns we tried this one last time Let's go, chums. Man, I'm so excited for Cyberpunk sequel. Oh, man. You're probably not as nearly excited as I am. So <laughs> I can tell you that. Hello, my friend. Oh, shit. That was something. Here we go. You know, punished. Jesus Christ. Poor person. Poor person. Why the hell he was even there, you know? He was just in the wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. Come on out, you are not in trouble? I've never heard that line, that's actually really funny. Jesus Christ! What the heck is that damage? What the fuck? It is that damage. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Okay, okay, gongs. Seriously. What the fuck? Stealth was recommended? Oh, thanks. I mean, this is exactly what we're doing. Okay. Okay, we need to fucking clean up that uh, back alley because literally that sixth street, sixth street was raiding my ass from the from the rear. Um, we need to um, take care of that. Oh shit! I didn't save the game. Holy fuck! We are so far away. Okay, let's drive. Let me actually check really quickly. Damn it! Why didn't I save the game? Uh, sorry, chums. Um, I'll be there in a second. Um, in meanwhile, let me check some comments. Um, Jesus Christ. No, 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 stop, stop. When I check the comments and I, and I don't... That car is powerful, by the way. Worth the money, though. Yo. Um. Um. Hi, Pavel, you really work for the project. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, <laughs> of course, of course I do. Uh, I'm a, a director of the Quest Open World and Cinematic Department, my friend. Uh, Big P Heisenberg. Uh, nice to have you, Big P, with us. Um, thank you for being a part of this masterpiece. I love Cyberpunk so much. Oh, I'm really glad, my friend, uh, you love the game. Um, 
it, I, it, I'm really honored to hear it. Oh, look at that actual fucking parking place, my friends. Um, I'm really honored to hear it uh, that you like the that you like Another cyberpunk. Um, you know, I I will be doing and we are doing like the best really we can. Uh, you know, to deliver you like a great expansion. And uh, I hope you're going to play it. You know, and I hope that you're going to to like it. You know, it's a. Uh, I think it's a. Uh, uh, I think it will be interesting to observe you know what you guys think and what you guys say i can't wait oh and that's how she looks like that's good to know okay um chooms save the game first step um let's check the comments um latest nvidia drivers increase the fps in cyberpunk but also break the map yes bjorn we actually talked about it uh nvidia was notified they know about this like our customer support actually uh sent a um update you know also on twitter and uh posted and created an article you know just after that happened you know what to do basically we need to revert to like the previous um um um, version of the drivers unfortunately there is something really wrong with this one um, but this needs to be addressed by Nvidia themselves uh, my friend so uh, unfortunately I can't really much can't, can't really uh, help much more I know that the Nvidia knows about the problem you know that's as much as I can uh, offer okay so because I started shooting here those gongs from here started attacking me so it's time to uh, it's time to talk Much better. Much better. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay, okay, Chums. Um, I will just... Oh, uh, there's the hotfix that NVIDIA released that should be included in a future driver's update. That's great, Diego, uh, Diego Mohill. I actually didn't know that, uh, Diego, uh, that NVIDIA already released something. I've, I've didn't I've didn't see uh, I didn't see anything yet um, to be completely honest with you but if you were saying that's the case uh, that's great to know go, go. <sighs> so much better Pavel, are people who wrote Throne Breaker still in CDPR? Best written game of 2018. Misho, no, sadly not. Uh, sadly not. Uh, Kuba, uh, uh, Kuba. Mm, um, um, Shamawek, uh, Jakub Shamawek, who wrote uh, the uh, Throne Breaker, is uh, is not working with us for some time at this point already. You know, um, like we still have like a lots of really amazing amazing writers. You know, Kuba really wanted to write like um, for the um, uh, for uh, write books and focus on uh, you know on his. Uh, future endeavors I think like one of his books is actually getting an adaptation actual like movie adaptation so I really wish him the best and I think he started cooperating also with the rebel wolves um, nowadays so uh, Kubas right now I think um, in Vancouver he moved some time ago so yeah a lot of stuff a, a lot of things happened since 2018 my friend you know but definitely like Kuba uh, was one one of the most talented writers I had a pleasure to work with uh, very, a really fantastic guy um, I wish him the best honestly and I would love to like be able to like work in the future a bit with Kuba you know I would be fucking cool Wow I literally cooked that guy with this fucking gun okay Okay, that is, uh, this dude is punished. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, I went down. Oh god, that was... D Jesus Christ, hammer time, exactly. Okay, chums, uh, uh, done fucking round, to be honest. Pedro Lopez, I always dream of getting into the video game industry. Now I'm finishing college and I'm not only need a PR communications internship, but I really want one. 
Uh, even if working for free, is there any way for me to apply for one? I mean, Pedro Lopez, so if you're asking uh, us, uh, like me, if there is a way, so first of all, we always we pay for internships. Uh, I think this is the only fair way uh, to do that. Um, so that's first thing. Second thing, my friend, um, you can check our website. There's like a bunch of different offers. Um, the internships are offered during summer. Uh, so definitely you can, you know, summer's not that far. Uh, well, you know, considering, depending how you look at it, but summer's not that far away. Uh, so what I would advise you is um, check our website basically for what options you have. Uh, there's actually a bunch of different um, positions, I think, in PR and communications department. So I really encourage you to try it, you know, um, uh, with... Uh, to try it and to, you know, uh, start working start working on your craft um and uh i, I think that that internship options are i am so bad i am so bad seriously what the fuck is this shit okay my chums seriously we are just mm, uh, lcs pavo is back i'm done with fucking around uh you got this thanks thanks my chum i'm done fucking around with this shit um Okay. This worked out seriously. So, my friend, going back to the topic, I'm sorry I interrupted because, like, uh, as you can see, I got killed. Uh, but, my friend, what I would advise you to do is check our uh, our um, summer internships. That's, like, one step. Second step is, and I'm aware that the summer internships are still quite far away. So, what I would advise you to do is um, check also, like, normal job offers, uh, my friend. And really, like, do not, do not get discouraged, you know, if you don't get the job right away. Uh, it will happen in time also like check the websites of actually smaller studios because the the thing is that we are a, a really big studio like our pr communications department is gigantic you know there's lots of people with the lots of different specializations um i would say um so it, it might be difficult you know to like right away i would say to go um and work for like a big big studio as us but what i would advise you to do is uh, try actually websites like Skillshot and others, you know, that offer uh, jobs for game devs, you know, especially for smaller studios like indies and so on. Like they were, they will have uh, a lot of offers like this. Also, like when you're an indie developer, like a lot of them really don't have, um, you know, a, a specialized PR department and they will be very thankful for you actually being able to offer them, you know, some help and support. Sure, for some indie studios, it might be work for free, unfortunately, but at the very, very beginning, maybe that's something you can consider. Uh, you know, of course, you know, I'm not advising you to work for free because I don't know your situation. But again, if you're still a student in college, I think like one of the best ways is to join some smaller indie team and, um, you know, help them out, you know, help, out, help them out, ship their game, help them out, you know, to ship to, <laughs> To manage the um you know the pr uh in their games whoa the hell um and this is where you could actually gain you know some experience and learn the craft you know before you will be able to um actually join like a bigger bigger gaming studio you know i think that that is uh, actually one of the best ways really uh to start Hell. Shit. Jesus Christ, my friends. This shit is intense. They are really high level here. And seriously, like... I got... Smacked so many fucking times in this location. Wow. Entering this was difficult to say at least. Okay. Let me loot uh, the bodies um, because there seems to be some interesting stuff lying around here. Good. Uh, all the loot gathered. Okay. Let me 
Save the game. Perfect. Um, good old comrade's hammer. Exactly. A good old comrade's hammer together with grenades. Um, that's basically my uh, stealth. That's basically the stealth way I play the play cyberpunk. You know, grenades are so much fun in this game. Yeah, especially that you know what, my friend, when you go actually into um, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, I uh, my bro my brain froze for a moment. When you go actually and you do you know you you did the Ozob quest and you get the uh, you know Ozob's grenades. Uh, actually, this is pretty actually fucking cool. Uh, but that being said, all right, maybe I can actually update some of my guns. Uh, oh yes, yes, that's per that's perfect. We have it like high level already. Uh, 05. Um, yeah, 05 I can't use yet. Yeah, let's do this. I'm um, just checking my equipment. You know, my friends. Uh, da, 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 those are the things I'm wearing. Well, nice, nice comrade's hammer, but where's comrade's nail? Uh, I don't know, my friend. Probably, probably not here. I didn't find it uh, clearly. Um, this is not available. Uh, okay. Is there anything that I can upgrade? Still not really. Okay. Okay then. Um, I think we we got this. It's saving. And uh, let's move on. Let's move on, my friends. Um, in the barrel. Yes. Did you build your own PC? Um, well, not really. I mean, kinda, sorta. So I, I have the, uh, I have the custom, custom PC um, that um, I bought, and I just like installed some components. So can you call it building your own PC? I guess kinda, but not, not completely. You know. It wasn't def definitely as spectacular as, you know, uh, Henry Cavill uh, building his own PC. You probably have seen that video um, on Instagram uh, that Henry posted. Uh, pretty funny. What is the best pierogi feeling? Huh. I think actually mushrooms. Like, I honestly, I honestly really love mushrooms, you know, as a traditional Polish person. I was also born in, you know, in the Polish mountains and, you know, my family had this tradition of like going and gathering like a lot of mushrooms. So when I was young, I was uh, always uh, have eating a lot of mushrooms. So I just fucking love stuff with mushrooms, you know, just ask the uh, Sapphire, you know, she knows that I love, uh, I love mushrooms, you know, and cabbage. Shit. Changing the fucking clip. Oh god. Oh no, 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 no. You bad person. Holy shit. I literally like barely fucking scratched him. Okay, I'll shoot him in the balls. Wow. Jesus Christ. This guy. Uh, okay. Very nice, very nice. You know, the, the um, Night City Yoga, my friends. Oh, geez. Okay, got the guns. That is cool. Oh. Interesting place. The fuck is this? It's like some kind of a... What are those? Okay, it's like four people sleeping here. Some kind of a fucking control center. Damn. New, uh, okay. Oh, a schedule. Let's go. A schedule. Um, <laughs> opinion on kimchi, picket cabbage. <laughs> go. I mean, well, I mean, for, for me, kimchi is too, too spicy. To be honest, my friend, I am like a Polish guy, and you know, like my mom and my grandma, when they were cooking, they were not using this much spices, you know. Um, so like, I'm used to food tasting like an actual like food not with the spices right so like every time when we are like ordering food with sapphire and stuff i always uh, pray not to get it too spicy and too hot because i'm just not used to spices so like and kimchi is way too fucking spicy for me like seriously if you had to join night city gang um excluding all the Cados, which one would that be oh valentino's Get this gold plate, my friend. Get the swag, you know. I would love to be Valentino. 
Uh, when are we gonna get FSR 2.1? Uh, Bold Potato asks, hey, B Bold Potato, uh, great that you are with us. I'm waiting for that before replaying the game. Oh, sorry, chat is scrolling. Um, and AMD says Cyberpunk is gonna eventually get it, shouldn't take too long, right? I mean, there's already a community mod for it. Uh, Belt Potato, did you use that community mod, uh, by the way? I just wanted to ask, because you probably seen how many ghosting issues uh, this uh, has. So, it's not really something that, um, you know, is like as trivial as it sounds. Um, however, of course, you know, uh, as it was stated by, uh, by AMD, that's something that is coming. But I'm not going to comment anything more regarding, you know, how much time it takes and what it what it's about. I just wanted to point you out towards the fact that, um, you know, the FSR has some issues, you know, like in, in that mod really clearly points it out. You know, I'm not saying those are not say solvable. Um, uh, and I will restrain myself from the comments on that field uh, anymore. Um, this is something that is a, a topic of the future, so uh, I am not going to uh, add anything more, okay, to that, my friend. Any recommended mobile apps to complement the game? Well, I mean, for me, the, the Road Race, right? Like, the Road Race is the best app you can get, it's for free, uh, you know, so definitely. <laughs> Definitely road, road race, my friend, you know. Okay, let's check the schedule. Parameter check. Scan rooms for listening devices. Jesus, they're fucking suspicious. Briefing on subnet audit. Check car and scan for listening devices. Alarm test, system test. Break. Parameter check. Watch calm feeds from yesterday. Technical perimeter check, hydraulic systems, wiring, mainframe, brake patrol, and brake. Um, okay, well, it seems like this place fucking guarded. That explains why those dudes are so tough to kill. Because the uh, security here is seriously tight. Okay, then. My friends, let's move on. This door... Ooh. ooh. Let's rip this off. Ugh. I love the feeling of those uh, of those gorilla arms. So awesome! Um, like uh, Sebastian Kalemba, our head of animation, um, Seba was really like uh, adamant that we really need to get this like rough, you know, feeling uh, of those arms, and I think he was completely right. This is interesting. That is some fucking inspiration, by the way, for a bedroom. This is this is some inspiration for bedroom, my chums. Damn, pretty fucking cool. Okay, here's the PC. We're going to check it in a moment. Cotton long sleeve, great. Okay, some cosmetics. That looks so uncomfortable. You mean like the bed? I mean, it didn't look that com uncomfortable, to be honest, I think. It's just two-sided, you know, bed with some LEDs. God damn it, so many messages. Okay, let's check it. Wayne Malinsky is talking to Tucker Albach. Okay, Tucker. Oh, Tucker is, I think, um, it's a she, right? We know. Okay. Dear Miss Albach, I regret to inform you that we will not be able to complete the cabinets you ordered on schedule. Our vernisher was shot yesterday and is in the hospital. It will take at least a week for him to return to work. I hope he does not inconvenience you greatly. Once again, my sincerest apologies, Wayne Malinsky. <laughs> Fucking, he got shot and it takes him a week to come back to work. That is like, yeah, the game's so pretty. I agree, Okram, I agree. Uh, Tucker uh, responds, actually, it is a pretty big inconvenience. According to our contract, Article 5, Paragraph 6, Sub 3, I have the right to charge you a penalty for each day of delay, and don't think I won't act on it. That sub story about your varnisher doesn't work on me. Hire another one? I don't care. T.A. God damn it. Exactly what she sounds like. Oh, thank you, Slappy Rad. Um, and then Jacob is talking to, talking to Tacker. Jesus. Oh, he's a CEO. Let's see how the how um how J what Jacob has to say about next steps, my friends. Talker, 
you're going to see a letter from HR tomorrow with a smorgs smorgasbord of mas mas masturbatory corpus speak. You know me. I don't go into our bullshit, so I'll lay it on you straight. I'm kicking you off the board. Or you'll be demoted to expert manager. You will lose access to your security plan, trauma in platinum, company apartment, and so on and so forth. If this sounds a punishment, good. That's the idea. Maybe you'll learn something. This isn't the girl, obviously. Fuck her. It's because you were a fucking gong. Driving alone, drunk, with important documents in the trunk, this could have ended badly for the company. Very badly. I should fire you. Fuck it. Make you disappear even. I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd say you had a death wish. But I've decided to give you a second chance. Get your shit together and don't make me regret this. Jacob Lan, CEO. Kirashi Optics. Uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, amazing email. Very friendly person, as you can see. The range, <laughs> the range plus facial expressions. Uh, anyway, okay. Thank you. Uh, from Hunter McPherson to Tucker. Hey, Tucker, I just wanted to thank you because of your uh, little fuck up. You're looking uh, at the board's newest director. Funny how things work out. <laughs> Eight years you fucked with me, sabotaged me, made me eat shit. And now you give me a promotion of a silver on a silver platter. I can't thank you enough, really. I'll raise a glass to you. And the board's next session, Hunter McPherson. Police notified. Okay, now, uh, uh, Stefan Heinrich is talking. I'll pass your letter to the police. I hope they'll teach you a lesson, Stefan Heinrich, assistant office of Tucker Albrach. Jesus Christ. There's like so much. Oh, and now Asif Mohammadi is talking. Dear Mr. Lablach, regarding our question, no, in the events of an attack of your property, no additional reinforcements will be dispatched. Your uh, insurance, unfortunately, does not cover immediate response services, which are uh, exclusively limited to members of the board. Um, if you'd like to discuss upgrading your security plan, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Best Asif Mohammadi, Asekuto LTD. Anyway, <laughs> all those emails is a good find by chums. Anyway, uh, I'm really glad. Um, I'm glad you like it. Cool. Holy shit, this place looks so fucking cool. <laughs> Interesting TV setup over the bed. Hmm, what is this? I found some uh, pieces of uh, clothing. Suspicious. There might be a person living here. Okay. Ha! Bathroom. Typical. Jesus. It's like a very fucking modern bathroom. Wow, that's very cool. Okay. Bounce back. Interesting. Um, okay, then. Uh, my chooms, I think we need to go higher. Oh, shit. Uh, the Mr. Yo guy is here. Interesting music is she listening to. What is... What? Where? Where did that fucking gun fall in? What the? Uh... Oh shit! I'm glad that this is all distractible. Come on, gun! Let me let me grab you. Great! I actually love that those things are like falling apart. Hmm. Uh, look at this. You know, uh, she has like an, a rock in her house. That's very interesting. Okay then. Uh, my chums. <laughs> no reflections, are you a vampire? Neutralized Tucker Albrach. Mm. Cool, so I guess she's uh, there. Those are one fucking big buns, by the way. Uh, those are bao buns, I believe. Um, the the Chinese, uh, Chinese bao buns. By the way, if you didn't ever have the bao bun, they are awesome. Uh... Okay. 
conversation's over. That was like a long fucking talk, by the way. My mom calls them buns. Fun buns. Oh, fun buns. Yeah, fun buns. Is okay. there a problem? I mean, I'm fucking literally pointing my gun at your face, so I guess you can say so. Uh, it's interesting, I approach and she's like, conversation's over. <laughs> Why not? Curious how you're gonna be able to worm your way out of this one. You gonna tell me you didn't see that girl? Slow down! What do you mean? What girl? The one whose blood was all over your limo? Oh, that! Whew! <laughs> I thought one of my competitors sent you. Look, this is all some gonk misunderstanding. I'm insured for accidents. Compensation's already been paid out. Case closed. Okay, I, I am seriously like, after she said that, I'm like, Okay, so literally, like, he was saying the truth, and she is full of shit. Whatever. Marlon Fusina, let's listen to the F Marlon story. I'm just seriously like, the case closed, <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, like, I came here, and she literally told me that she killed that girl, and she, was, she feels it's fine because she's um, insured. I mean, seriously, am I a fucking punisher or not, you know? I'm a Morkman of Night City. Anyway, okay, guys, let's read the story from Marlon Fusin uh, Fustino. My name is Marlon Fusino. You don't know me. People like you and me don't often cross paths. You work on the top floor of a skyscraper. Why I pick trash of the curb hundreds floors down. But for those rare exceptions where we do it usually ends in tragedy. Two weeks ago, you hit a young woman with a car. That hour was late, it was dark, no one saw a thing. If you had stopped and uh, called for an ambulance, she might still be alive. But I guess uh, you had an important meeting over uh, cocktails to go to get to. That girl bled on the sidewalk. Her name was Rosita and she was my daughter. You made me bury her. Ever since she was born, I set aside every spare any I could for her education. But that money won't go to waste. It's all going to a good cause. The hired killer who's going to blow a hole through your arrogant brain, Marlon Fusino. Marlon, you will be delighted to hear that we have fucking delivered the justice. Um, anyway, um, seriously, what the hell? Death of a mercenary, outer unknown. Okay, do you guys want to uh, 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 listen to the death of a mercenary? Let's try it. You know, I'm not actually really sure. I, I don't think I've ever read the death of mercenary, outer unknown. Uh, oh, this fucking poem. Five minutes remaining. Yes, I know. Okay, let's do it. Quick enough, now I, nor bold enough, nor agile, tangled up in wires like a nest of vipers vile. Was it or was it I who fell, or was it it done to me, dissolving, disappearing, with you I wish to be, now tethered, clamoring, the restless swarm, beating in my ears a pale rage. No! Into the earth I seep. My life, this sweet, torn sticks in my throat, a chill burned brighter on. To the end, what a thought, a huddled husk, I tumble for a down. The old certainty of youth is felled, and from its gnarled trunk, memories fall forth. Hours of our sharp and presenting, pressing race, embedded in a power locked embrace wish you i wished to be with you i wish to be and so i go down a road with and through woods half dreamt and the chill bleached delirium of desire flies into trepid trembling sand through the fog your shadow sharpening the storm tangles in me once again to sway with you like the sweetest Sweet grasses dry, still the glassy dust with naught but rice. Interesting. I really need to check it, actually, this one in Polish, too. Because this one was definitely difficult um, 
for me to read and uh, and follow, to be honest. Messages. Okay, this is literally the everything that we have read, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, all of those messages we actually read. We have checked all the places. I think we're ready to leave. Fucking hell. I literally went in the corpus house and executed her. That is that is some rough life, but I mean she deserved it, didn't she? And she didn't show any remorse. What so fucking ever? I was oh I was not happy to hear it. Uh yes, uh, let's just let's just follow the map into the uh, where did I come from? Wait, I am lost right now like hell. I came from here. Oh yes. Yes. Okay, Padre, call me. Yes. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew thirty men. Plus Tucker Albach. <laughs> well played, V. Bloody but efficient. Closing the contract. I mean, that's particularly. Daitesh, that's technically speaking my middle name, you know, bloody but efficient, you know, um, uh, 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 that's uh, exactly how it works. My dears, um, I am uh, really uh, happy that we have played so much uh, today together. I'll save the game right now really quickly so that we won't, um, you know, lose our uh, dear progress. Um, and uh, we will be slowly, slowly wrapping it up, uh, you know, my friends. It's been amazing, as always, to play the game for you. Um, let us actually play some banger um, this time around, because why not? Uh, this is Let You Down by David Pochadwo. An amazing, an amazing piece of music. Thank you so much, my dears, to being here with us. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, time with you, as always. Um, we are going to see each other. No, we are not going to see each other next week because I'm going to be traveling. I forgot. Yes, we are not going to see each other next week. I will be I'll be back uh, in two weeks, uh, my friends. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, visit my dear uh, Sapphire. So some of the flying, uh, you know, ahead of me. But I'm going to be back as always. My friends, I wanted to thank uh, all our amazing rats uh, that have visited us today. Uh, Chivok our customer support engineer, um, Mazi, our art QA lead, uh, Michał Brzeźniak, our cinematic designer, um, and I'm not sure if I missed anyone, but I don't think so, and two of our amazing moderators who have been helping here, uh, my dear girlfriend Sapphire, and our dear friend Kogito. Thank you so much to all of you, thank you to all the Reds that have been here. Uh, especially to Mihao, I think, to, uh, who was answering the questions on the chat. It's really appreciated. And my friends, we are going to see each other most likely in two weeks. Um, when um, we are going to continue playing, you know, there's still lots of cyberpunk to play. Uh, lots of adventures to have. I'm leaving you with this amazing banging music. And I wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Bye bye.
forgive me for letting 